Freddy is one lucky guy. He works at a chocolate factory as a night guard. Once, he was checking the factory as usual. He noticed that someone had stolen several boxes with exclusive chocolate candies. The next morning, Freddy questioned three suspects. Jason, a pastry cook, said that he'd finished his shift at 7 p.m. and gone home right away. His wife couldn't confirm that he stayed indoors all night. Harry, a delivery guy, said, I don't eat chocolate at all. Even the smell of it gives me a severe rash. And Peter, a cleaner, said, Yesterday, I was cleaning the warehouse. I found one chocolate candy on the floor and ate it. I'm so sorry. Please don't fire me. Who is the thief? Harry. He's standing in a room with a bowl of melted chocolate without any protection. He would have a rash if his allergy was real. Another working day at the chocolate factory. Jason decided to prank Freddy and covered a raw chicken egg with a layer of chocolate. Then he wrapped it and put it among real chocolate eggs on a tray. When Jason brought the chocolate eggs, Freddy spotted the fake one immediately. Can you figure it out? The real chocolate eggs are hollow inside, so they were rolling all over the tray when Jason was walking. But the raw egg is heavier, and it didn't move much. Well, Freddy decided to pay Jason back. He dressed up as a ghost to scare him. But suddenly, several real ghosts appeared in the room. Can you figure out which of these ghosts is Freddy? This guy over here, he's the only ghost who is not transparent at all. One evening, the factory was celebrating its anniversary. The management organized a party. All employees participated in a karaoke competition. Most of them all sang incredibly well and received gifts and flowers. But only two of the best singers, Nancy and Betsy, made it to the final. They prepared to face each other in one more round. But suddenly, Betsy fell to the floor, unconscious. Doctors claimed that she had been poisoned. But all the participants of the competition had eaten exactly the same food. Besides, the police checked the dishes, and they were okay. Can you guess what happened? Someone poisoned Betsy's flowers. Next day, Freddy came to work as usual. He looked around and exclaimed, Eh, wait a minute! Who's brought a cat to the chocolate factory? No pets are allowed here! Can you see any animals? Here it is! The cat got scared and ran away to another room. Freddy followed it. Can you spot the cat now? It's hiding over there. And again, Freddy failed to catch the cat. It ran out of the building and hid in the garden. Can you help the guy find the cat? Ah, the poor animal is over there. Freddy caught the cat and found a small note attached to its collar. It had contact information. Freddy called the cat owner, but no one answered the phone. So, after work, Freddy took the cat and went to the address mentioned in the note. It was a creepy castle. The door was locked and required a password. Can you help Freddy crack the code using this hint? The password is rainbow. A gloomy old man greeted Freddy inside the castle. Freddy expected that he would thank him for bringing the cat back. But the old man began to laugh evilly and lock all the ways out. Then he said, If you manage to complete three tasks I give you, you will get a million dollars. But if you fail, you'll stay in my castle forever. Here's the first task. Help me find my glasses among all these vegetables. 
Can you help Freddy? Here they are! The next task from the old man was to cook a potion and do it in the correct order. He gave Freddy this recipe. Can you help the guy? First of all, you gotta put curry. Then go for blueberries to make the potion look greenish. And finally, add tomatoes to make the potion look brown. As for these vegetables, Freddy doesn't need them. And the third task is to find a book in this messy room. Can you see it? It's half hidden inside the sofa. The old man gave Freddy his money, showed him the exit, and disappeared. But when Freddy tried to leave, he realized that the door was locked. It had a combination lock. Freddy found this mysterious note nearby. He has to get this right, or he might stay trapped for a long time. What code will open the door? Two, three, six, one. Each number corresponds to the number of circles in the first set of numbers. Now, Freddy was free to go. As soon as Freddy got out of the creepy castle, he decided to quit his job and go on a trip around the globe. First of all, he took a flight to Spain. On board the plane, he met Gloria. He asked what country she was from. Instead of answering, Gloria showed him this puzzle. Can you guess the country? That's right, she's from Ireland. Then Gloria asked Freddy what country he was from, and he showed her this puzzle. Can you guess his country? Cuba. Freddy landed in Madrid and went for a walk. He hadn't rented any hotel in advance, so he just wandered around the city, searching for a nice place to stay. Suddenly, Freddy noticed this cute little hotel and entered it. Big mistake. Why? See this zombie in the window? This place doesn't look safe. As soon as Freddy entered the creepy hotel, the door slammed behind his back. The guy saw three doors leading to freedom. Venomous spiders were crawling behind the first door. Behind the second door, arrows were flying at head height. And behind the third door, there was a black hole. Which door should Freddy choose? Can you help him escape? He should choose the second door. He can crawl under the arrows. After his adventure, Freddy decided to have lunch in the local cafe. But something's definitely wrong here. Can you figure out what it is? Look at this window. The view of the street is upside down. The waiter came over to Freddy to get his order. But suddenly, a woman at the next table began to shout, Help me! Someone has put cockroaches in my soup! The cafe manager questioned three suspects. The cook said that he had prepared the soup as usual. It was okay when he passed the dish to the waiter. The waiter said he hadn't touched the soup. He just served it to the woman and switched to another client, Freddy. The woman's husband said, I wasn't there when my wife got the soup. I was washing my hands in the bathroom. Can you tell who's guilty? No one. Take a look at the ceiling. The cockroaches crawled out of the ventilation and several of them fell into the lady's soup. Freddy used a special app to rent a luxury apartment in Madrid. He found three options that he really liked. Mariana offered a cozy two-story studio with a beautiful view. 
Diego had a penthouse near a park. And Camilla offered a high-tech villa. Which option should Freddy choose? This penthouse has a cracked glass roof, which is extremely unsafe. As for the third option, see the Eiffel Tower? Camilla's high-tech villa is in Paris, not in Madrid. So, Freddy should choose the first studio. Freddy invited Mariana for a walk in the park. They walked a lot and got very tired. They decided to lie down on the grass and rest. Freddy woke up an hour later. Mariana had disappeared. Freddy started looking for her. Half an hour later, he fell into a big pit. It began to rain. The guy realized that the pit was going to get flooded. That was a big problem. Freddy couldn't swim. He found some stuff in the pit. A rope, a ball, and a bucket. How can Freddy get out? The ball will float up to the surface. And so will Freddy if he holds on to it. Freddy kept looking for Mariana. He came across a wizard's castle. The wizard had caught the girl and turned her into a frog. Freddy had to help her. The guy and the Mariana the frog found the wizard's book of potions. It described all the necessary antidotes. But first, the guys needed to understand which potion the wizard had used on Mariana. Freddy looked through the book. The first recipe included a slice of pumpkin, a slice of green apple, an orange wedge, and half a kiwi. The second recipe required a chamomile petal, three garlic cloves, and half of a red apple. The third potion should contain an orange wedge, a garlic clove, a banana peel, and a chamomile petal. Which potion did the wizard use? Take a look at the ingredients on the shelves. They only match the third recipe. Freddy helped Mariana turn back into a human. The wizard got very angry and teleported Freddy to jail. The guy was desperate. He had no idea how to escape. Suddenly, a creepy man opened the door and said, Come on, I'm going to help you escape. Freddy followed him, but he slipped, fell to the floor, and hit his head. Freddy woke up in a pit. He didn't remember how he got there. If he went to the left, he would end up in the bathroom. If he went to the right, he would have to crawl through a tunnel filled with toxic waste that was leading outside. Which way should he choose? Freddy should go to the right. If he chooses the left corridor, he will end up in jail again. Look, this bathroom is on the territory of the jail. Freddy escaped, took a shower, and called Mariana right away. The wizard picked up the phone and said, I have created enough evil clones of Mariana. (laughs) I don't need her anymore. You can take her home now. Freddy rushed back to the wizard's castle and saw four Marianas. Can you help him find the real girl? This Mariana has claws instead of nails. She looks like a werewolf. This one has very sharp teeth and ears. She's probably a vampire. This lady has scales on her face. She's a mermaid. So the real Mariana is over there. Blue ocean, golden sand, green palm trees, fresh fruit. This place is like a paradise. It's good that Luke finally went on vacation. He's sunbathing, drinking cocktails, and enjoying life. Such a perfect day. Maybe too perfect. Luke's smile disappears. Nothing is real. Two signs indicate that Luke is dreaming right now. What are these signs? The first thing is that there are two suns in the sky. The second sign is that the ocean has no waves. Luke gets scared. He realizes he's sleeping. At this moment, a giant kraken comes out of the ocean. It stretches huge tentacles towards Luke and screams out like a siren. How can Luke escape from it? Where should he run? (laughs) 
There's no need to run anywhere. This is a dream, and the Kraken can help Luke wake up. The monster grabs the guy, and... He opens his eyes and realizes he's in a laboratory. He was caught a few days ago. A group of people have been conducting strange experiments on him all this time. It wasn't the Kraken he heard. It was a real siren. Flashing red lights illuminate the lab. The room itself is a mess. Lots of stuff on the floor, overturned tables. There are no people, only pictures of some scientists on the wall. There should be a key to the door among all these documents and garbage. Quickly, help Luke find it and escape. And the key is hidden, not here. It's not needed. The door isn't locked, see? Luke is about to leave the lab, but wait, what does he need to take with him? Look around the room. He can only take one item. Luke should opt for the shoes. They're going to be useful outside. Luke puts on a pair of boots and gets out of the lab. He's in a long corridor. He sees several guards ahead. They start chasing after him. Luke runs away in the opposite direction. There are three ways in front of him. One corridor is filled with toxic gases. The second way is a bottomless dark abyss. The third corridor is so hot that the walls are glowing red. What should Luke choose? The second hall with the chasm. See how the light gets reflected from the abyss? This means there's a glass floor covering it, and Luke can walk on it. Luke runs through the second hall and finds himself trapped. Several guards are standing there and everyone is looking at him. It seems like there's no chance of getting out, but wait a minute, the guards are not dangerous. Why? They're motionless because they're either well-done wax figures or real people who can't move for some reason. Luke leaves the room. And now, he's in a long corridor again. The doors close behind him. Guards are rushing towards him from the hall. And doctors are running from the other direction. What should Luke do? Hurry up, help the guy before they notice him. Do you see a laundry basket? There are white coats there. Luke should dress up as a doctor and walk past the guards. The guy enters one of the many doors and finds himself in a large room for experiments. This is where they keep their test subjects. There are several locked cells with people sitting inside. They ask Luke to release them. Unfortunately, he can only free one prisoner. But who? A werewolf is locked in that cell. An electrical human is in another. A seemingly ordinary girl is locked in the third one. In the furthest cage, there's a guy with a shark's mouth. Luke should save the girl. Come on, all the other prisoners are scary monsters. Did you expect a trick? Sometimes the simplest answer is the right one. Luke opens the cell. The girl's name is Jessie, but she doesn't want to go with Luke. She doesn't believe him. Why? Because Luke is wearing a lab coat, he explains to Jesse that he put on these clothes to remain unnoticed. He's as much of a prisoner here as she is. Jesse finally believes him. Together, they escape from the lab, but the guards and scientists notice them. Our heroes are trapped. There are three rooms in front of them. An electrical current is running non-stop through the first one. Three ferocious lions are in the second room. There's a fire raging in the third one. How should Luke and Jesse escape? They don't have to enter any of these rooms. In the corridor above them, there is an open ventilation hatch. These guys should help each other get in there. They crawl through the vent for a few minutes. Finally, they reach the elevators. But the heads of two creatures have got stuck in the elevator doors. One of them is a werewolf. The other is a zombie. Jesse and Luke can only save one of them. 
Who will survive without their help? The guy saved the werewolf because the zombie is no longer alive anyway. He can survive even without his head. The werewolf runs away while Luke and Jesse get into the elevator. The laboratory is located deep underground, so they go 40 floors up. The doors open, and they find themselves inside an old hut. Our heroes go outside and see a winter forest. Jesse and Luke run forward as fast as they can. They hear dogs barking and people screaming. The scientists are chasing them. The guys come to a crossroads. The first way leads to a lake. At the beginning of the second road, there's a sign. Beware of wolves. The third road leads to a high cliff. Where should they go? It's winter now, so the lake is frozen. Luke and Jesse run across the lake and find themselves in a clearing. Two guys are standing there. Hey. Both of them seem normal. They ask Luke and Jesse if they can come along. Luke feels that one of the guys is not who he claims to be. Hey. How can he figure out which one it is? If you pay attention to the footprints in the snow, you'll see how this guy appeared here. But there are no footprints near the second guy. How did he get here? It's suspicious. Jesse and Luke agree to take along the first guy. His name is Max. He says he's also escaped from the lab. He knows there's a road somewhere nearby, so they decide to find it. They wander through the forest for several hours. No one seems to be chasing them anymore. But now, they have a new problem. They're cold and hungry. Sometime later, they see a small house where they can warm up. But the door is locked. Where's the key? See this scarecrow next to the forest? The key is in its hand. The guys open the door and find food and clothes. They rest, eat, and get warmer. Soon, they're ready to set off. There's an old car in the backyard. There's even some gasoline in its tank. But when Luke is driving it out of the yard, the car runs over a nail. The tire is punctured. Now they have to walk again. It's getting darker and colder. Despite warm clothes, our guys start freezing. How can our heroes keep warm? There are old dry leaves, moss, and grass under the snow. Luke, Jesse, and Max put all this inside their clothes. Yeah, they stain their t-shirts and sweaters, but they also create an additional layer of protection against the cold. Finally, they're near the edge of the forest. Through tree branches, the guys see a road illuminated by moonlight. They're saved. Now they only need to catch a car. Max, Luke, and Jesse walk along the highway and finally see headlights. Luke raises his arm to stop the car. A small pickup truck is slowing down. The driver rolls down the window and asks if the guys need help. Jesse quickly tells him everything that has happened to them. The driver asks them to get in the car, but Luke doesn't want to. He's sure that this man is one of the bad guys. How has Luke figured it out? When Luke woke up in the lab, he paid attention to the pictures of the scientists on the wall. This driver is one of them. The guys run back into the forest where they come across a pack of wolves. The hungry animals surround our heroes. One of the wolves is about to attack, but a loud howl scares it, and it runs away. A monster covered with fur comes out of the bushes. Max screams and is about to run away, but Jesse and Luke look calm. Why? Because this is the werewolf our heroes rescued from the elevator. They follow the monster. It leads them to a safe place. This is a small village hidden deep in the forest. Creatures that don't look like humans live here. Werewolves, bird people, merfolk, and humanoid trees. They used to be people, but the scientists changed the structure of their DNA. Now these creatures are going to destroy the laboratory to take revenge. While Luke, Jesse, and Max are resting, 
you have time to check your score and find out how useful you've been in this adventure. 0 to 3 points Luke wouldn't have gotten out of the lab if he had listened to you. It's still difficult for you to get out of tricky situations. Maybe you were too nervous. Or perhaps you should work on your ability to focus. 4 to 7 points You've been helping the guys get out of trouble pretty well, but still, this is not enough to become a team leader. You'll definitely get better after a little more practice. 8 to 11 points You can find a way out of almost any difficult situation and deal with any problem. Just a bit more and you will become a perfect leader. 12 to 15 points You're a real hero. You can successfully overcome any difficulties and lead large groups of people. Don't lose your focus. It'll help Luke and his friends in their next adventures. 16 to 17 points. You're the best of the best. Problems don't scare you. They entertain you. Gemma is a mermaid. No, really. She lives in the Atlantic Ocean with her family and friends. Can you tell who the youngest sister in the family is just by looking at them? Take a look at the granny mermaid. She has plenty of starfish on her tail. It's a hand. Each star symbolizes one year of life. That means that the second mermaid is the youngest. Her tail is decorated with 15 starfish, which means she's 15. And two other sisters are 18 and 22 years old, respectively. Now one day, Gemma went to a mermaid party. But one of the guests was not a real mermaid. Can you tell who it was? This shark over there is not a mermaid. Gemma's mother, Fiona, owns a cute one-story jewelry store for mermaids. She came to her store early in the morning and found out that the most expensive necklace had been stolen. She called the underwater police. Detective Fisher <laughs> arrived and questioned Fiona. I closed the store at 10 p.m. and went home. The pearl necklace was still right there. Detective Fisher identified three suspects. The owner of the store next door said, I closed my door at 8 p.m. and went home right after that. The guard said, I was on duty last night. Perhaps the thief snuck into the store when I was patrolling another floor. And the cleaning lady said that she'd finished cleaning at 4 p.m. Then she rushed home because her husband was having a birthday party. So, who's lying? The guard. Fiona's shop is a one-story building. He couldn't be on another floor when the necklace was stolen. There's no other floor. Gemma was swimming with dolphins and reached the surface of the ocean. Suddenly, she noticed two handsome guys, Nick and Rick, and they were both in trouble. Which guy should Gemma save first? Rick. Although this wooden boat is a bit flooded with water, it's still okay, and Nick can scoop the water out. But this inflatable boat is damaged. Rick will soon find himself in the water, and a shark is nearby. Gemma saved both guys and brought them to the shore. Nick grabbed his phone and took her picture without permission. Gemma asked him to delete the photo, because merfolk didn't want people to know about them. Nick said, okay, I'll delete the evidence. But first, you gotta crack my riddle. Salty water everywhere, but not sea in sight. What am I talking about? Can you help Gemma? The correct answer is tears. Rick asked Gemma on a date, and she said yes. She went to a local witch doctor to buy a potion to get human legs for 24 hours. The door to the witch's house was locked, and the note said, If you want to meet me, find the key first. Can you help Gemma find the key? Here it is! Gemma opened the door with the key and found another door that required a password. There was a note on the door. 
What has 88 keys but cannot open a single door? Can you help Gemma crack the code? It's a piano! Gemma didn't have any money. The witch offered her this deal. If you guess my riddle, I'll give you the potion for free. But if you don't crack it, you will be my servant forever. So listen, two in a hole and four in a pack. Six in a trio, you see. Eight's a quartet, but what you must get is the name that fits just one of me. What am I? Gemma cracked this riddle right away and got her potion. What about you? The correct answer is half. Gemma got the potion, drank it, and turned into a human. There were three routes she could take to get to the meeting point. The first path led through a village inhabited by vampires. The second path is full of toxic flowers that could make her lose her mind. And the third path went through an enchanted forest that blocked all magic and canceled all previous spells. Which Uh-oh. way should Gemma choose? The first option is the safest. It's a sunny day and vampires are probably sleeping. Rick and Gemma met at a restaurant called Three Mermaids. But there are only two statues of mermaids on the porch. The owner of the cafe, Victor, is well aware of this and could easily fix this. But he doesn't. Why? This is his business strategy. Passers-by notice the mistake, enter the restaurant to inform the owner, and often stay for lunch. Rick is a detective at the police station. During his dinner with Gemma, he received an urgent call from work. Jeff, a country house owner, said that his housekeeper had tried to get rid of him. The night before, the housekeeper gave him an apple for dessert. The man took a bite and passed out. He woke up the next morning and immediately called the police. Rick and Gemma went to the crime scene. The housekeeper denied everything. Gemma didn't know who to believe. But when Rick examined the crime scene, he understood who was lying right away. Who's the liar? The housekeeper or the owner? The owner said he'd eaten a poison apple. So if it happened the day before, This apple must be brown now, but it's not. The man must have bitten into it just before calling the police. Gemma didn't notice this clue because she doesn't live on land. Rick and Gemma decided to have a picnic in a sunflower field. But something's wrong here. Can you tell what exactly? The wind is blowing the clouds to the right, but the sunflowers are swinging to the left. That's impossible. Gemma fell asleep in the field. When she woke up, Rick was gone. She looked around and saw an evil elf. He said, I've put your boyfriend in jail, mermaid. If you want to see him again, solve my puzzle. I can be red, blue, purple, and green. No one can reach me, not even the queen. What am I? Can you help Gemma save Rick? The correct answer is Rainbow. The elf took Gemma to his secret lab. He said, I've cloned your boyfriend so we don't need him anymore. Now you may take him home. Unfortunately, I don't remember which of them is the real Rick. But you know better. Can you help Gemma decide which of these guys is her Rick? This guy has three fingers. This Rick's teeth are too sharp for a human. This Rick lacks eyebrows, and this one has pointed ears. So this one is the only real human. The elf returned Rick to Gemma. The guys rushed away from his lab. 
It began to rain, and they decided to hide in an old, creepy castle. When they entered the building, they saw a beautiful fountain. That's when Rick and Gemma realized that they were not alone. There were many ghosts in this castle. Can you figure out the exact number? There are seven ghosts in this picture. One of the ghosts is hiding inside the fountain. And the guy over there is not a ghost. He has feet, and he's sweating. He's the owner of the castle. The owner showed Rick and Gemma his art collection. It contained an ancient and expensive item he was very proud of. This is a picture created by a 16th century artist. (laughs) I got it from my father, and he got it from his father, too, and so on. But Rick didn't believe that the painting was original and called the castle owner a liar. Why? See this plastic cup? It couldn't exist in the 16th century. Well, it stopped raining and the guys decided to leave the castle. But the door had disappeared. The owner of the castle was very angry and offered them only three options to escape. There was a tunnel with a fire burning inside behind the first door. Dangerous, angry snakes were waiting behind the second door. And there was a portal leading to a black hole behind the third door. Which door should Gemma and Rick choose? The first door. They can put the fire out using the water from the fountain and vases from this shelf. Rick and Gemma went to the beach because the 24-hour spell was coming to an end. Gemma had to return to the Sea Kingdom. Suddenly, the Wicked Witch appeared out of nowhere and said, You guys are so cute! I don't want you to be apart. If you manage to solve my riddle, I'll turn Gemma into a human for good. Here's your task. How to poke a balloon without popping it. What do you think? Rick cracked this riddle right away. What about you? The correct way to do it is by letting the air out of the balloon first. Gemma became a human. Rick was very glad and invited her to go on vacation right away. They arrived at the airport, but suddenly an elegant lady began to shout. Someone had snatched her super expensive bag. Rick reacted quickly. He detained three suspicious passengers who had been hanging around for the last hour. Rick and the airport security watched the footage from the cameras. Unfortunately, they could only find the footage of the events from five minutes before the theft. So, who's the criminal? It's the guy over there. The elderly woman's bag only looks bigger because she put her jacket inside. And the stolen bag wouldn't fit in this girl's purse. Gemma was living happily with Rick. But one day, she received this postcard from her mermaid sister. Gemma was horrified. She dropped everything and went back to the Sea Kingdom to save her sister. But when she got there, she saw that her sister was safe. How did she survive? See these theater curtains in the picture? It was a show for the inhabitants of the sea. Well, that figures. Kim and Ashley are best friends. They decided to spend summer vacation in Italy together. They were very lucky to buy cheap plane tickets. Their flight was at 10 a.m. Unfortunately, when the girls arrived at the airport, they realized it was the wrong one. Now they have two options. Take a high-speed train for 100 bucks to go to the right airport, or stay here and buy tickets for a later flight for $400. What should they choose? The second option. Look at the clock on the wall. It's 9.55 a.m. The boarding for their flight is already over. They won't make it even if they take the high-speed train. Kim and Ashley bought new tickets. They went to the airport restaurant to drink coffee. But one weird detail scared Kim away. She suggested they should leave that place as soon as possible. What did Kim see? (laughs) 
This woman over there is a zombie. Wow, how did she get through security? When it was finally time to board the plane, it turned out there were no more economy class seats left. Kim and Ashley were offered to fly in business class. There, the girl saw three people. When the flight attendant served them fresh juice, she whispered that Kim and Ashley were extremely lucky. They were about to travel next to a famous Italian billionaire. Can you guess which of these passengers is the billionaire? This glamorous lady is a good candidate, but it's very unlikely a billionaire will wear a 100% polyester coat. This guy's business suit is very elegant, but look at his shoes. They seem quite cheap and worn out. This funny gentleman must be the real billionaire. Although his outfit is rather casual, his gold watch looks very expensive. The glamorous lady began to chat with Kim and Ashley. She told them she had recently visited an exotic island with her friends. Then she showed the girl some pictures. When the lady went to the bathroom, Ashley whispered to Kim, This woman is a liar. She photoshopped his picture. How did Ashley know that? It's all about the shadows. They all look natural, except for this one. The glamorous lady took a sip of her juice and started coughing. Suddenly, she fainted and fell into the billionaire's arms. He was ready to shout for help, but Kim stopped him, saying the woman was faking it. How did she know that? Look at the content of her bag. It's full of the billionaire's pictures and magazine articles. She also has a tattoo with his portrait on her leg. This woman is obsessed with him. It was lunchtime, and the billionaire offered Kim to play a game. There were three boxes. One of them contained a meal. There was a statement on each box, but only one of them was true. Can you help Kim figure out which box has food inside? If the food is in the first box, there are two true statements. And if the food is in the third box, there are also two true statements. But we need just one true statement. That's why the food can only be in the second box. Kim opened the box. She saw a delicious meal and a bank card. The billionaire said, congratulations, you've won $5 million. Enjoy your trip. Kim and Ashley landed in Rome and went to get their luggage. It turned out that Ashley had had the same suitcase as two other passengers, and they had a little quarrel. Can you help distribute the three suitcases among these people? The first suitcase belongs to this woman. It's covered in her dog's hair. The second suitcase has some traces of a star sticker. You've probably noticed it before on Ashley's bag. And the third suitcase belongs to this man. Since Kim and Ashley were now very rich, they decided to find a real estate agent who could help them rent a luxurious villa. They wanted to spend their vacation there. The agent showed them three houses. Can you help the girls choose the best one? There are cockroaches in the first house. Mm, They won't make very pleasant neighbors. The second house is too old. There's a crack in the wall, which doesn't look safe. And the third house looks pretty good. As for the pool, it can be easily cleaned. Yes! Kim and Ashley left the villa and went sightseeing. When they returned, they found out that someone had stolen their passports from the safe. The girls called the police, and they interrogated three suspects. The chef was too busy making dinner for Kim and Ashley. The cleaner was dealing with the pool all day. And the gardener said he had been outside planting flowers. He didn't notice anything suspicious. Who's lying? the gardener. If he planted the flowers, where are they? The police returned Kim and Ashley their passports and arrested the gardener. The next day, the girls went shopping. Sellers wanted to take advantage of rich and naive tourists and offered them overpriced souvenirs. Only one of these three items is a good deal. Can you guess which one? Take a look at this Venetian mask. It says made in China, which means that this mask can't be real. This magnet is of very low quality. The word Italy is spelled with an error. It simply can't cost $100. 
This blue cheese doesn't look fresh, but it's normal for this kind of product. This delicacy is the only thing that Kim and Ashley can buy here for a fair price. The ladies went to the local museum and got lost in its corridors. They found a strange basement with three doors. There was a time portal to the Middle Ages behind the first door. Behind the second door, there was an evil mummy. It cursed anyone who bothered it. Finally, the third door was protected with a laser alarm system. It cut through anything that touched the laser beams. Which door should the girls choose? The second one. The mummy is sleeping peacefully inside its sarcophagus. If Kim and Ashley are quiet and don't come close, they can just walk by it. When the girls got outside, they saw a crowd of reporters around the museum. Someone has stolen the most expensive painting. The police questioned three suspects. Giovanni, the cleaner, said he had been washing the bathroom when the theft happened. Hmm. Luca, the museum guide, saw a suspicious woman with a large folder not far from the crime scene. And Bianca, the suspicious woman, was just drawing sketches as part of her art school homework. Who's lying? Luca. He has a rolled canvas under his shirt. Kim and Ashley came to a restaurant to enjoy the local cuisine. But they noticed a vampire among the visitors. So the girls decided to leave. Which visitor is the vampire? This elderly lady is wearing sunglasses in the evening. Also, she doesn't have a shadow. (laughs) Then Kim and Ashley took a boat trip. A local photographer took their picture and printed it on two similar t-shirts. Then he offered the girls to buy these souvenirs. But Kim noticed three differences between these pictures. Can you see them too? Here they are! The ladies came to a bakery. Kim ordered a salad and coffee, while Ashley wanted to eat something sweet. The barista offered her three remaining options. Help Ashley make the right choice. Someone has already tasted this cupcake. Ants live inside this donut. It's probably not very fresh. But this croissant is safe. The green color is pistachio glaze, not mold. In the evening, Kim and Ashley arrived at the villa. The owner was there, and he was furious. He hadn't received any rental payment because Kim and Ashley's card presented by the billionaire was blocked. Suddenly, they heard breaking news on TV. Some scammers had robbed the billionaire. All his accounts were empty. Three people commented on the situation. The billionaire's driver said his boss had many enemies. The billionaire's girlfriend complained that now she couldn't even afford a new haircut. And his PA said they would try to return the money soon. Ashley knew for sure that one of them was hiding something. But who? The girlfriend. If she had no money, how come she left the boutique with so many purchases? The owner of the villa offered Kim and Ashley a deal. If you manage to prepare my favorite cocktail, I'll forget about your debt. The girls had no choice, so they agreed. The man gave them the recipe, but the last ingredient was coated. Can you guess what ingredient it is? If you mix blue and yellow, you'll get green. So the ingredient must be green grapes. Next morning, Kim and Ashley woke up locked in a room with two doors as the only exit. If they chose the wrong door, they would stay in the room forever. And if they picked the correct door, they would end up with loads of jewelry, money, and designer clothing that would be enough for the rest of their lives. Two guards were standing in front of them. One guard always lied, while the other always told the truth. Kim and Ashley didn't know their identities. The girls could only ask one question. What should they ask? The question should be, if I asked the other guard which door leads to the treasures, what would he say? If they asked the guard who always tells the truth, he would say that the other guard would point to the wrong door. And if they asked the liar, he would point to the wrong door too. 
In either case, both guards would point to the wrong door. So Kim and Ashley should just choose the other door. Tomas was washing a window on the 24th floor of a large office building, and suddenly, he heard someone screaming. The guy looked outside and saw a lady falling from the 30th floor. But in five minutes, the woman was standing on the ground, totally unharmed. How did she survive? Take a closer look at the sky. Yes, it's Superman! He saved the lady. Look at the picture. What's wrong here? Watermelons don't grow on palms. Twin brothers Stan and Ken had been working hard. They wanted to collect money for their mother's anniversary. Unfortunately, they didn't manage to save enough to buy her the car of her dreams. The brothers were very upset and agreed to go shopping the next day and pick another gift. At night, Ken couldn't fall asleep because he got a genius idea. While his twin was sleeping, Ken secretly took all their savings and headed to a casino. It was his lucky night. He tripled the sum. In the morning, Ken put all the money back in the box and fell asleep. Stan woke up, opened the box, and immediately realized that Ken had touched their savings. He didn't even need to count the money to understand that. How did Stan figure it out? In the box, there were large and small bills in the evening, but now there are only large ones. Kelly was traveling and discovered a beautiful abandoned castle. She entered the building and went downstairs. She was taking pictures when someone locked her inside the basement. Kelly looked around and saw three tunnels leading to freedom. In the first tunnel, a huge hungry monster was waiting for her. The second tunnel was full of snakes. And the third tunnel was filled with sleeping gas. In five minutes, Kelly was outside the castle, running to the nearest police station. How did she escape? She used her headband as a mask and ran away through the third door. Look at these animals attentively. What's wrong with this picture? This little guy on the left is listening to music. Two sisters went on a hike. Each of them took a box of matches. Nellie put her matches in a bag together with toothpaste, and Shelly decided to store her matches in a bag with nail polish. While the sisters were walking through the forest, they accidentally fell into a huge puddle. When they got out of it, Shelly suggested making a fire to dry their clothes and cook something to eat. Both sisters took out their matches. Unfortunately, Nellie's matches were covered in toothpaste, and Shelly's were in nail polish. Both girls left the matches to dry in the sun and left to collect some firewood. It started raining, and all the matches got soaked. But 10 minutes later, the sisters still managed to make a fire and toast some marshmallows. Whose matches did they use? They used Shelly's matches. The nail polish dried and made them waterproof. If you don't keep it, it'll break. What is it? It's a promise. Susan was asked to describe her sons. She said, they're all redheads but three, all blondes but three, all brunettes but three, and all pink haired but three. How many sons did Susan have? The answer is four. One redhead, one pink-haired, one brunette, and one blonde. Lisa was a famous top model. She was found unconscious in her dressing room during a photo shoot and taken to a hospital. Doctors said she had a severe allergic reaction. But when Lisa came to herself, she insisted she hadn't eaten anything all day. The model's manager was very concerned and interrogated everyone who had been around Lisa. The stylist said she had applied Lisa's makeup and, indeed, hadn't seen her eating anything. 
The cleaning lady said she had cleaned the dressing room with organic, non-allergenic products. Lisa's main rival, Nora, said she had been watching the shooting all day long. She hadn't noticed anything suspicious. Who's the culprit? It was the stylist. Lipstick was the only thing Lisa could have swallowed that day. Look at the pictures. Which of these people is a risk taker? The girl is risking less. She's sitting on the second floor, and there's a pool below. The guy is risking more. The building he's sitting on is taller. You can see clouds and planes in the sky. What food can you never cheer up? A blueberry, because it's always blue. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, let's move on. There are five lemons in a bowl. You take away three of them. How many lemons do you have now? Well, you have the three lemons you took. King Gerald has a very beautiful daughter named Teresa. Four princes from different countries came to the kingdom, hoping to marry the girl. But the king decided to check how smart they were and organized a special contest. Teresa was in the center of a 200 by 200 foot room, and the princes were standing on small boxes in each corner of the room. The first prince to touch Teresa's hand would become her husband but they weren't allowed to leave their places or use anything but their hands or wits. One of the princes figured out what to do immediately. He married the princess. What did he do? He just asked Teresa to come over and touched her hand. You can easily find me on Earth, Mars, Mercury, and even Jupiter. But you'll never find me on the Moon, Venus, or Pluto. What am I? I'm the letter R. Manager George received an anonymous text message. It said a robber had just entered the supermarket where he worked. George hurried into the hall and saw four pregnant women in the grocery section. The man looked at the ladies attentively, detected the thief, and called the police. How did he know? The woman on the right is the only one who doesn't have a shopping basket or cart. She's putting groceries inside her fake belly. Imagine that you're in a room with no windows and no doors. How can you get out? Eh, just stop imagining the room. Mrs. Victoria decided to give her grandson Rick an unusual gift for his 18th birthday. She called him into her room, showed the guy her safe, and handed him a corked bottle with a key inside. Honey, this is the key to my safe. You can keep all the money you find there if you manage to open it. But you must take the key out without removing the cork or breaking the bottle. Good luck. Rick accepted the challenge and started thinking about the puzzle. What would you do to get the key out? Push the cork into the bottle and you'll easily get the key. Look at the picture. What's wrong here? The lady's reflection is holding the bag in the wrong hand. Amy had a crush on her neighbor. She went to the local witch, Sally, to ask for her help. Sally said she would make a purple love potion. On the night of the full moon, Sally took a sheet of paper with her granny's love potion recipe. She mixed all the ingredients except for the last one. Suddenly, a gust of wind threw the recipe into the fireplace. Sally was desperate. She didn't remember the name of the last ingredient, but she still knew for sure that the potion should be purple. Help Sally finish her work.
she should add the blue ingredient. When you mix blue and red, they make purple. Harry and three other video bloggers travel to a creepy canyon. They wanted to make a video about this mysterious place. They had been filming all day long. In the evening, they gathered around the fire, but it started to rain and everyone went to sleep in their tents. In the morning, Harry woke up, left his tent, and headed to the big bag with food to grab something for breakfast. That's when he discovered that all the food was gone. Harry got angry. He woke everyone up and interrogated the members of his team. Fred said he'd been looking at the starry sky all night. Jane said she'd been trying to catch a Wi-Fi signal to have a video chat with her boyfriend. And Sam said he'd been sleeping. Who is lying? It's Fred. It was raining at night, and he couldn't see any stars through the clouds. Two students, Betty and Sarah, went for a walk after a very stressful test. They bought some coffee and candies and began to look for a picturesque spot for a picnic in the park. But suddenly, a guy in a mask grabbed Betty's bag and ran away. Sarah and Betty followed him. At one point, they saw a blind man sitting on a bench. He was wearing glasses and had a cane. The girls asked him if he'd seen a person in a mask carrying a female bag. But the man said he couldn't have seen anyone because he was blind. Sarah got very embarrassed, handed him a candy, and thanked him for his help. Then the girl took Betty aside and whispered that the blind man was the robber. They needed to call the police. Betty was very surprised. Why did Sarah decide the man was the robber? If the man was indeed blind, he wouldn't have seen the candy. Will's mother has three sons, Fred, Peter, and... Will. It's Will's mother, after all. Two mothers and two daughters spent all day shopping, but they only bought six dresses. This was enough for each of them to have two dresses. How is that possible? Only three people went shopping. A mother, her daughter, and her daughter's daughter. One of them is a daughter and a mother at the same time. And each of the three purchased two new dresses. Vincent got locked in a room with no windows and only one massive door. There's a panel with several buttons on the left and another one with a hint on it on the right. There's also a clock on the wall above the door. Which button should Vincent press to get out of the trap? The green triangle. The numbers on the panel represent hours. If you connect them on the clock face, you'll get a triangle. The door opened and Vincent got into a dimly lit hall. There, he saw one more door. But this time, both the lock and the key were hanging together on the same chain. But after examining this system for a couple of seconds, the guy understood he wouldn't get out this way. Why? The key has a different pattern. It won't fit in the lock. Vincent needs to look for another way to escape. Then Vincent notices a table standing in a dark corner. There's a piece of paper, a knife, and several inflated balloons lying on it. Vincent picks up the paper. It's a note. To get out of here, you must puncture a balloon with a knife. But if the balloon loses any air or bursts, you'll stay here forever. Vincent thought for a while, then he did something, and a hidden door opened in one of the walls. What did he do? He let the air out of one of the balloons. After that, he easily punctured it with a knife. Detective Marcus and another passerby became witnesses of a car accident. A man, hit by a minivan, was lying on the ground, unconscious. Marcus rushed to the nearest cafe to call an ambulance. When he got back, the passerby told him the man had turned onto his back but hadn't come to his senses. After looking at the scene for a couple of seconds, the detective said, You'd better return everything you've taken from this man. Why did he say so?
when they saw the man first, only one button was buttoned on his suit jacket. But now, it's already two buttons. The passerby must have opened his jacket to look for the wallet and then buttoned it up incorrectly. Look at this picture and try to figure out who is an alien in disguise. It's the guy in the yellow shirt. He's eating a banana, but he hasn't peeled it before biting on it. He probably sees this fruit for the first time. Three famous detectives came to a coffee shop to discuss a tricky case. A waiter came up to them and asked, Does everyone want coffee? The first detective said, I don't know. The second detective answered, I don't know. And the third detective said, yes. Do you know what the first two detectives ordered? All the detectives ordered coffee. Each of them wanted to have this drink, but the first two couldn't know if it would be everyone's choice. If the first two detectives hadn't wanted coffee, they'd have simply said no. So, when the third detective heard the replies of his colleagues, he figured out both of them wanted coffee. And since he was also going to take a cup, he said yes. Ralph, Willie, Amber, and Grace are in a museum room. Someone stole a priceless exhibit from this room several hours ago. Ralph, Willie, and Amber claim they have nothing to do with the crime. But the detective doesn't believe them. They all get arrested and taken to the police station. Only Grace, who hasn't answered the question, is free to go. Why? Grace is the detective. Janice was having her morning coffee in a cafe when she heard a car screeching to a halt, then loud shouting. She ran there and saw a man with his bicycle on the ground and a car standing nearby. The cyclist didn't look hurt, and Janice helped him to get up. The car driver came up to them, too. The cyclist pointed at the man. He made me crash by hitting my bike with his car. But the driver said, I saw him losing control of his bike in the mirror. Then he fell to the ground, and I stopped the car to go check on him. Janice almost immediately understood who was lying. Have you figured it out? The car doesn't have side mirrors. There are also lots of things in the back seat. They block the view of the road. So the driver couldn't have seen anything in his rearview mirror either. He's lying. One wealthy businessman was famous for always wearing a white hat. But one day, he came to his office with a bunch of fruit on his head. His employees were shocked, but they didn't dare to question the man. The situation repeated the next day. On the third day, the businessman's secretary plucked up all his courage and asked what was going on. The man answered, Ah, that's because I lost a bet. I haven't fulfilled it yet, but I'll do it today. There's no need to order lunch for me. What did the businessman have to do to fulfill the bet? When he made this bet, he said, If I lose, I'll eat my hat. Detective Mark Darson suspected one man of committing a crime. He decided to stake out his house. Not too far away, he spotted an artist setting up her easel. Apparently, she was going to draw the criminal's house. At one point, the detective had to go away to the police station. He asked the girl to call him if she saw someone entering or leaving the house. She agreed. When Mark came back in the evening, the artist told him she'd seen no one. The detective immediately understood she was lying. How did he figure it out? When he was leaving, all the windows in the house were closed. But in the picture the girl drew, the windows are open. It means someone was inside while Mark was away. Take a look at this picture and try to understand which guy is Ben. Ben is the guy looking for something on the floor. He's the only one not wearing his shoes. That's because they're still in his locker. You've got a sack filled with coffee beans. You need to use this coffee to completely fill two other sacks of the same size. How can you do it?
put one empty sack into the other and fill them with coffee. A large sum of money was stolen from Mr. Green's safe. The police suspect Alan. But Alan says, I don't know anything about safes or about how to open them. I'm a simple blacksmith. The detective doesn't believe him and asks Alan to prove it. He gives the guy one job-related task. If he copes with it, he's telling the truth. Alan gets five different chains. Each of them has three links. The detective asks the guy to make one chain out of these five pieces. But he can separate and combine only three links. In no time, Alan finished this task and was released. How did he do it? Alan separated three links of one chain and used them to connect the remaining four chains. Can you move just one matchstick to make a square? Pull this matchstick up a bit. Here's your perfect square. Mr. Bernard, a famous inventor, lived on the sixth floor of an apartment building. After long months of work, he finally created a time machine. He packed lots of food, water, and other necessary stuff and was ready to test his invention. He set the timer so that the machine took him 500 years back into the past. Mr. Bernard was about to press start when a thought came to his mind. He took the mechanism and carried it to his garage that was on the first floor. Why? This way, the inventor would avoid getting hurt. Five centuries ago, there were no such high buildings. He'd simply fall to the ground from the height of the sixth floor. Look at these guys carefully. One of them lied when he said he hadn't painted the green smiley face on the fence. Which one is it? It's the guy on the left. Check out his left hand. Even though it's in his pocket, you can still spot some green paint he'd used. Bruce was walking along the beach when he found a glass bottle. The thing looked old, and the guy spent a long time trying to open it. Finally, he succeeded. To his shock, a genie rose from the bottle. I'll fulfill your three wishes, but you aren't allowed to wish for more wishes. Bruce agreed, but still managed to get more wishes. How did he do it? His first wish was that the genie allowed him to ask for more wishes. Several birds landed on trees, one bird for one tree. But in this case, one of them didn't have a tree of its own. Then they regrouped, with two birds sitting on one tree. After this, one tree was left free. How many birds and trees are there? There are four birds and three trees. Detective Hall, one of the agency's most talented detectives, used his coded key and entered the apartment where the secret documents were hidden. To help him find them, his assistant Clark had left an encrypted note with the exact location of the documents. It looked like this. Detective Hall deciphered the message and found the documents. Where were they hidden? The note says, under the carpet in the studio. The detective just read it backwards and ignored the spaces between the words. Uh Uh-oh. Tommy was exploring old caves outside the city when he got trapped in a mysterious dungeon. There were three ways out, but only one of them was safe. Behind the first door, a fire was raging. Behind the second door, there was acid rain, which could melt any substance within seconds. Behind the third door, there was a huge brown bear that hadn't eaten for two years. Which way should Tommy choose? Tommy should choose the third way. No animal can go for two years without food and survive. Barely. (laughs) It was a stormy day, and it had been raining for several hours straight. A car accident happened in a tunnel. The yellow car crashed into the red one. The driver of the yellow car said it had been raining so heavily he hadn't seen anything. So the accident wasn't totally his fault. 
But the police asked the man to stop lying and claimed it was all his fault. Why? The accident happened in the tunnel. It couldn't be raining there. Mrs. McAdams, who was having a day off with her friends, came back home in the middle of the day to change her clothes. There, she found out that her daughter, Eveline, who she grounded, wasn't at home. Mrs. McAdams got angry and texted Eveline, asking where she was. Eveline texted her back, saying she was at school. The girl even attached a picture of the classroom. Mrs. McAdams didn't believe her daughter and told her to come home immediately. How did she understand Eveline wasn't at school? Look closely at her cell phone. It's Sunday. There's no school on Sundays. Ned works in a club. His job is to check people's ID cards and to not let suspicious people or people younger than 21 years old get inside. Take a look at these three ID cards and figure out who shouldn't enter the club. The first person is already 21, and nothing else looks suspicious in his ID. The second girl seems alright too. It's written that Brielle was born on September 31st. Ah, but such date doesn't exist. Her ID must be fake. Mrs. Cabell is the owner of a small company producing expensive designer cups. On Friday, when the working week was finally over, she got a call from her bank. The woman found out that someone had stolen all the money she had saved. Mrs. Cabell realized it must have been one of her workers, so she asked each of them what they had been doing that day. Sloan, a sales manager, said she had been talking to their clients and looking for new ones. Atticus, a potter, said he always made one cup a day and he showed all the cups he had done that week. Sierra, a designer, said she had been working, but she also admitted she hadn't been really productive that day because of some family issues. Who lied? Atticus. There are five working days in a regular week. The man said he made one mug a day, but he only showed four mugs. It means he missed one day of work. Lennox and Finn were friends living in the same college dorm. One day, Lennox reported that something had happened to his friend. He said Finn hadn't left his room all day. He also never responded to any of Lennox's texts. In the evening, Lennox started to worry and knocked on Finn's door, but the guy didn't answer. Lennox peeked through the keyhole and saw that his friend was lying on the floor, so he called the police. After that, Lennox got arrested. Why? Lennox has a bandage on his right eye, but the keyhole is located in such a way that it's only possible to look inside with the right eye. It means the guy couldn't do it. He simply knew what had happened. Esme was having a walk in the forest and got lost. For about the 20th time. Hey, don't ask! Anyway. She found the witch's house, walked in, said hi, petted the cat, and asked the witch to show her the way home. But the witch had a problem. She was learning a new spell and accidentally did something strange to her chairs. On the bright side, she now had a riddle for Esme to solve. The witch had 20 chairs. Now, some of the chairs only had two legs, and half of the rest had no legs at all. How many legs did all these 20 chairs have in total? We know that some of the chairs have, on average, two legs per chair. The rest of them have either four legs or no legs at all. And since half of the rest have no legs and the other half have four, together they have two legs per chair. So there are exactly 40 legs. Mr. Tucker was a businessman. He wanted to find an interesting hobby to impress people. He chose art, even though he knew nothing about it. Still, he kept buying paintings and even owned a couple of famous masterpieces. He liked to invite his potential business partners over to show off his collection. One day, his guest was Miss Geneva Darby, a young lady who owned a jewelry business. As always, Mr. Tucker boasted about his collection, but Miss Darby wasn't impressed. Why?
Look closer at this supposedly 16th century painting. There are a couple of cars on the road. But there were no cars at that time, so the painting must be fake. Evie and Kai were planning to go on a bike tour with their friends. Unfortunately, Evie didn't feel well, so she canceled on her friends and asked Kai to stay with her. Kai was disappointed, but agreed. Evie fell asleep. When she woke up, she already felt better. She offered Kai to ride their bikes a bit, just the two of them. But when they went outside, Evie realized that while she had been sleeping, Kai had been out with the friends without her. How did she understand it? Look, Evie's bike is all wet. It must have been raining while she was asleep. But Kai's bike is dry. It means that he used it and then wiped it off. Or maybe he wasn't even in the area when it was raining. Two weeks ago, a bank was robbed. But the robber hadn't been found yet. A phone call woke Detective Callum up in the middle of the night. His colleague reported that a farmer had found the money. When the detective arrived, he questioned the farmer. The man said, I uh, argued with my wife and went outside. That's when I found a bag with money in a cornfield. Detective Callum asked if the farmer had noticed anything suspicious before. The farmer replied, "Eh, About two weeks ago, before going to bed, I looked out of the window. I saw a man walking through the field. It was a full moon and I could clearly see his silhouette. But there wasn't enough light to notice more details about him. The farmer was arrested. Why? The farmer said it had been a full moon two weeks before. But it's impossible. As you see, it's a full moon now. The farmer is lying. But why? Ashley was hurrying to an unplanned business meeting. She asked her boyfriend, Dean, to walk the dog. Dean agreed. But then his friend called and invited him to play a new video game. So the guy decided to skip walking the dog that day and joined his friends. He and Ashley met right outside the house when they both were going back home. Ashley asked what Dean had been doing. The guy said, I walked the dog and then went to play video games with my friends. Ashley immediately understood he was lying. How did she figure it out? It's winter. Look at the footprints in the snow. There are Ashley's footprints going both ways and Dean's footprints going both ways too. But there are no dog footprints. Mrs. Rivers reported that someone had broken into her house. They stole all the money and jewelry she kept in her living room. Detective Callum arrived to investigate the crime. The room was a mess. It was obvious that someone had been looking for something there. But in the end, the detective concluded that there was no robbery. Mrs. Rivers made the whole thing up. Why did he decide so? Look at this very expensive and fragile tea set lying on the floor. If a criminal had really been there, he wouldn't have cared about the set. It would be smashed after falling down. It seems that when Mrs. Rivers was staging a robbery, she didn't feel like breaking her expensive tea set. Viviana and Malcolm were working outside. Malcolm was repairing the roof, and Viviana was working in the garden. Suddenly, a hammer fell from the roof and hit Viviana on the head. She was taken to a hospital, and the police came to figure out what had happened. When Malcolm told them everything, the police arrested him for staging an accident. Why didn't they believe the guy? Viviana was working right next to the house. She was sitting under the roof. If the hammer had fallen accidentally, it would have slid down the roof and fallen behind the woman's back. It could hit her only if someone threw it at her on purpose. Well, that's not nice. A young woman went to another town to look for a better job. She promised her mother she would come and visit her often. But four months passed, and she still didn't come home. Her mother missed her very much. One day, in the middle of winter, the woman shouted, April is here! How is it possible? April was her daughter's name. 
she finally came to visit her family. It's usually under you. Take away its first letter, and it'll be above you. Take away its first two letters, and you won't see it. What is it? It's a chair, which can transform into hair and air. Look at this picture and try to understand what's wrong with it. Why would this young lady put a pair of boots on the table and a saw in the fridge? How about this image? Does anything strike you as odd? There's a snowman in the oven and a fish in the toaster. Dennis, Maria, and Julie were at a party. They decided to play a game. There were five hats, two red ones, and three yellow ones. The friends closed their eyes, took random hats, and put them on their heads. Then they opened their eyes and looked at one another. Each of them had to guess what color the hat on their head was. Dennis and Julie said they didn't know, but Maria exclaimed that she knew the color of her hat. What color was it? It was yellow. Maria saw that Dennis and Julie were wearing red hats. And she knew there were only two of those. You can't share it until you take it. What is it? It's a photo. You see a combination of letters O-T-T-F-F-S-S. What should be the next three letters in the line? They should be E N T. These are the first letters of the names of the numbers from 1 to 10. Michael was walking along the street when a sealed envelope landed near his feet. The guy picked it up. Inside, there was a key and a note. It said, Help, 323. Michael entered the building. Soon, he found a door number 323 and used the key to open it. He saw a man near the open window. He was gagged and tied to a chair. Once free, the man exclaimed, Two men broke into my office, tied me up, and took all the money from my safe. Luckily, my hands were free. I managed to write this note and throw it together with the key out the window. Michael didn't believe the man and called the police. Why? The envelope was sealed. How could the man do it if he was gagged? It can never be thrown, but it can be caught. People are always looking for ways to lose it. What is it? It's a cold. Two teams were playing soccer against each other. Each of the teams scored two goals in total. And still, it wasn't a tie. One team won, and the other lost. How come? One of the teams scored an own goal. Young but very popular blogger Eric wrote his first book. It was a huge success. The guy was preparing for his first book signing. He was very excited and nervous. So he took a break to steady his nerves in a quiet corner. But even at 6 p.m., when the meeting was supposed to start, Eric was nowhere to be seen. In 10 minutes, a security guard found him lying on the floor in the bathroom someone had hit the writer on the head. The police had three suspects. Angela, his agent, said she had been solving some urgent organizational issues. Frank, one of the fans, said he had been a great lover of Eric's books for years. He wouldn't do anything to harm the writer. And Patrick, the security guard, said he had been doing his job, keeping the fans away from the entrance. Who hit Eric? It was Frank. It was Eric's first book. Frank couldn't possibly be reading his books for years. Look at these guys carefully. Who is a fake fireman?
it's the guy on the right. He's not wearing a helmet and doesn't have a special bag. Plus, his pants aren't part of the uniform. You have 3 empty cups and 10 sugar cubes. You need to distribute these sugar cubes between the cups so that each of them contains an odd number of cubes. Put 3 sugar cubes in the first cup and 3 cubes in the second one. After that, put the remaining 4 cubes and the second cup in cup number 3. Now, the first cup has 3 sugar cubes, and the second one has 3 sugar cubes too. As for the third cup, it has 7 sugar cubes, 4 of its own and 3 in the second cup. Two roommates, Deborah and Rachel, were walking home after doing their weekly grocery shopping. Deborah kept complaining about how heavy her bags were. Then Rachel told her, I don't understand why you're upset. If you gave me one of your bags, I would have twice more bags than you do. And if I gave you one of mine, we would have the same number of bags. How many bags were the girls carrying? Rachel had 7 bags, while Deborah was only carrying 5 bags. Detective Black's assistant, Josh, was late for work. When he arrived, he told his boss the following story. I was driving along the highway when I saw an unconscious man lying on the left side of the road. I picked him up and took him to the nearest hospital. Finally, he came to his senses. He told me he had been pushed out of the moving vehicle. The bag and all of his money and documents were left inside. But Detective Black said the man was lying. How did he figure it out? If the man had indeed been pushed out of the car, he would have been lying on the right side of the road, not the left one. Kenneth was starving. He found a nice diner that served burgers and bought one. After a waiter brought him his order, Kenneth went to the bathroom to wash his hands. But when he came back, his burger was gone. The guy looked around the diner and understood who had taken his lunch. Can you figure it out? It's the young woman with a dog sitting at her feet and sniffing the air. If she was just drinking coffee, which is what she's pretending to do, the dog wouldn't be so interested in her. Mary was walking through the park when she spotted a hungry dog. The woman decided to share her snack with the animal. Unfortunately, there was a stream between her and the pooch. She squatted down to attract the dog's attention and showed it the food. The animal was next to her in no time. There was no bridge over the stream, and still, the dog wasn't wet. How is it possible? It happened in the winter, and the stream was frozen. A rich entrepreneur disappeared from his office. The only thing he left behind was a note with the numbers 6, 4, 9, 10, and 11, and a calendar. The police have five suspects, James, Kevin, Carol, Jason, and Laura. Who knows something about the man's disappearance? It's Jason. The numbers mean months of the year, and the first numbers of these months make up the culprit's name, J-A-S-O-N. Matthew bought a new smartphone and a phone case. He paid $310. The gadget cost $300 more than the case. How much did Matthew pay for the phone? He paid $305. Tony was hosting a party. Three hours after it started, several guests came up to the guy. They asked where they could charge their phones. Unfortunately, there was only one socket in Tony's house. The guy checked all the power strips he had. Help him figure out how many phones he can charge at a time. Tony can charge 8 phones. Look, one strip has its cord cut. The strip with one socket is literally useless. One of the strips doesn't have a cord whatsoever. Another has no hole for a plug. 
plus one socket on each of the two strips will be taken by the plugs from the others. A rich businessman called the police. When he arrived at his office in the morning, he remembered he had left a bunch of important documents in his safe at home. He sent his secretary, John, to bring them. But the guy called half an hour later. He said the safe was open. The documents were still inside, but all the money had disappeared. The police examined the businessman's home office. They tried to find some fingerprints. Nothing at all. The detective had three suspects. The secretary, the businessman's nephew, Mark, and the housekeeper. The secretary said he had called his boss as soon as he had seen the safe. Mark said, I opened the door for John. Then I went to my room and found out about the accident only after John called me. The housekeeper told the police she had been very busy with her chores and hadn't been to the office since the previous evening. Who took the money? It was the secretary. There were no fingerprints in the room, but John was there and definitely touched different things. If he hadn't been guilty, he wouldn't have wiped his fingerprints off. Can you find a dino that is different than the rest? Right, it's this one! You wake up in a dark, cold dungeon. You don't remember how you got here, and you don't know what's going on. You rub your head because it hurts. Your ears are ringing. Hey, calm down and focus! Creepy puzzles are waiting for you, and at the end of the video, you'll see how good at them you are. You see several strange symbols scratched on a brick wall. It's four vertical stripes, three stripes below, and a check mark even lower. Next, you come to a grid. A huge, rusty lock is hanging on it. There's no key. Look around and try to figure out how you can get out. Have you noticed that brick that sticks out of the wall? Try pushing it! Ha! Ah, it worked! A secret door opens and you make your way outside. You go down the stairs and see a large hall. Several torches light up, and you spot four huge mirrors. They reflect Frankenstein, a skeleton, a zombie, and a vampire. One of these creatures is a human being. Can you guess who it is? Vampires don't get reflected in the mirror, so you're looking at a human. He gives you a small bone and warns that you will need it. You get outside and realize you're in the courtyard. This is the territory of a large, sinister castle. There are no clouds in the sky, and the sun is hidden behind one of the tall towers. You can see three gates ahead. A werewolf is next to the first one. A second gate is guarded by a huge scorpion the size of a car. And the third gate has a scary, alive gargoyle. Something is wrong here. Uh -oh. Find out what exactly. The sun is shining brightly, so there's no full moon. So what's a werewolf doing here? It's just a human in a costume. The werewolf opens the gate and you go through. You're back in the castle and step into a small room. There are cobwebs everywhere and a lot of garbage on the floor. You can see a jar of salt on the table and a note on the wall. It says, a circle of salt. You decide to take the jar just in case. At this point, a slippery, viscous liquid starts dripping onto your shoulder. You look up and see a big spider descending towards you on its web. You run away and see three doors. You can hear screaming behind the first one. Behind the second door, you hear the sound of a chainsaw. A dog is barking behind the third one. Quickly, you've got to decide where to go. Run through the third door. Yeah, you'll meet an angry dog, but you have a bone. You throw it, and the dog immediately feels better. It nibbles on its trophy and forgets all about you. On the floor, you can see human footprints that lead to the next door. You push the handle down. It's locked. Look around the room and find the key. The 
The dog is gnawing on the bone, and the key is glinting on its collar. You pet the dog and gently remove the key from its neck. You open the door. It's dark, and you can't see anything. You take a small step forward and fall into a deep hole. Fortunately, you're not hurt. On the ground, you find an old MP3 player with headphones. It still has some battery left. Great, you put it in your pocket. You can't climb up the smooth walls of the pit, but you can see that someone has thrown down two ropes for you to get out. One rope is white and slightly shining. The other looks quite ordinary. Choose which you should use to get out. The white rope is a spider web. The spider is still chasing you. So you choose the normal rope. You get out of the pit. The rope is tied to a marble pillar. You untie it and put it in your pocket. You slowly walk down a dark corridor and hear a growl behind you. It's a werewolf! The full moon is out. You run out of the corridor and find yourself in the street. There are three paths ahead of you. The first road is covered with lava. The second one is swarming with snakes. And the third road leads to a poisonous lake. Hurry up! The werewolf is coming! There's a shoe lying right on the water on the left side of the lake. This means that the lake is frozen. You're sliding on the ice and falling. The werewolf is still chasing you, but it slips too, and you have time to run to the solid ground. There's a massive tower ahead. You run inside and close the door. You find yourself in a circular hall lit by torches. Human faces appear on the walls. Their hands begin to reach out. The phantoms are slowly approaching you. They're everywhere, surrounding you. What will you do? Remember that jar of salt and the note saying, a circle of salt? You should spill salt around you, and the phantoms won't dare cross that line. You do, and then wait for a while, and they disappear. You climb up a spiral staircase to the top of the tower. The door slams shut behind you. There's one window and an iron torch stand mounted on the wall. In the center of the room, you notice a wide bed, surrounded by a white veil. You push the veil aside with your hand and see that two zombies are sleeping there. They open their eyes, get up, and slowly walk towards you. What are you going to do now? Use the rope you found before tie it to the torch stand and go down through the window. Great! The zombies are too stupid to pull the rope back. You're on the ground and see a car. At this moment, the werewolf breaks out of the castle. You get into the vehicle and lock the door. The werewolf hits the window with its paws. You can't find the key. It's probably in the glove compartment, but it has a three-digit combination lock. Recall the beginning of your adventure and try to guess the code. Hurry up before the werewolf breaks the glass. In the dungeon where you woke up, there were several signs on the wall. Four vertical stripes, three stripes below them, and a check mark even lower. The check mark is the Roman numeral 5. Then the code is 435. You take out the key, start the engine, and drive away. You leave the castle but realize the car's brakes don't work. There are three roads ahead. A brick wall is at the end of the first one. The second road leads to a burning forest. And the third road ends on a high hill with a cliff. What path will you choose? There's almost no time! You're driving too fast! Release the gas pedal and drive up the hill. The speed will soon drop. At one point, you'll be able to get out of the vehicle. You jump out of the car and it falls off the cliff. You go around the hill and get into a swamp. You make your way through the marsh and see three women in front of you. Which one is a mermaid? The woman in the middle has something strange on her neck. Those are gills. The second girl has webbed fingers. The girl on the left seems normal. She's a human. You pass through the swamps and find yourself on the seashore. An old motorboat is lying on the sand. 
you push it to the water, start the engine, and climb inside. You go far away from the island with the castle. In the distance, you see some rocks and shipwrecks. You slow down and hear beautiful singing. It's coming from several women staying on top of the rocks. They're sirens. Using their singing, they lure sailors whose ships crash against the rocks. You move straight toward them and can't resist it. The rocks are getting closer and closer. Do something, quickly! You still have your MP3 player you found in the pit. You put on the headphones, turn on the music, and go away. The engine stalls. Far ahead, you can see an outline of another island. You grab an oar and start rowing. A few hours pass, you're hungry and thirsty. There are fish swimming in the water, and you find a can of worms in the boat. But how can you catch them without a fishing rod? Use one of your shoelaces. Tie the bait to it and lower it into the water. It works! You catch a few fish, but then you notice a shark's fin. It circles you and pushes the boat. The island is really close, but you need to get away from the dangerous creature. How are you going to solve this problem? Throw the fish you've caught as far as possible. This will distract the shark and give you some time to get to the shore. Done. But unfortunately, you've given your lunch away to the sea hunter. Exhausted, you get to the shore. Here, you meet a man. It says it was him who left you the MP3 player and the rope. He also wrote the code on the wall of the dungeon. Without a word, you kick him in the shins and he hobbles off. No, you don't, but I sure would. Anyway, you're glad that everything is over and just lie down on the sand. But the man tells you it's not the time to relax. Other tough tests are waiting for you. You hear bizarre sounds coming from the jungle. But that's another story, and this one is coming to an end. Time to find out your score. 0 to 4 points, and don't get upset. You can do better, but it's a bad idea for you to go to magic castles. 5 to 8 points, hmm, not bad. You've proved that you're brave but you were a little lacking in resourcefulness. You will solve other riddles better. 9 to 12 points, almost perfect. You've passed the test and proved that you can get out of any dangerous situation alive. 13 to 15 points, it's not you who should run away from the monsters. They should be wary of you. Any mystical castle can become your home. Ooh, Halloween is coming close, and Detective Marlin has his hands full with all kinds of creepy creatures and mysterious cases. Hopefully, you'll help him crack these frightening riddles. Yeah. A scared store owner called Detective Marlin. He said there was a vampire in his store. When the detective arrived, he didn't see the store owner, but there were three other people inside. Look at them attentively and help the detective figure out which one is a vampire. Well, the first one's eyes are red, but it looks as if he didn't sleep well at night. The second one is freezing. All parts of his body are covered with some pieces of clothing. But look at the third one. He's drinking something red from a glass using a straw. Uh He must be the vampire the detective is looking for. Now, where is that store owner? Look at this family very attentively. Detective Marlin was invited to their house to figure out in the body of which family member a ghost is hiding. Soon, he found the answer. How about you? Admittedly, the woman does look scared, but it has nothing to do with the ghost. She just choked on some food. The man is wearing dark glasses, even though he's indoors. But he's blind. Do you see that white cane the blind used next to him? That's why he's got glasses. The granny is the one you need. There's a trace of ectoplasm that goes through the whole room toward her. 
One day, a very pale woman covering a bite on her neck with her hand approached Detective Marlin. She said that when she had been returning home the evening before, someone had attacked her and turned her into a vampire. She wanted to find the culprit. The detective found three suspects. Look at them and find the one that has turned the woman into a vampire. This man is quite old and has no teeth, so he can't be a vampire. This woman has tan marks, but vampires can't sunbathe. So the man wearing a hat and gloves must have turned her into a vampire. Now Detective Marlin is walking through a park when he notices three men sitting on a bench. He immediately realizes that one of them is a ghost. Can you guess which one? The first man has a pale complexion. The second one is just wearing loose, oversized clothes. The ghost is the man whose leg is going all the way through the bench. Two husbands suspect their wives were werewolves. They invited Detective Marlin to find out the truth. The detective examined the women's bedrooms and realized that only one of them was a monster. Which one? This bedroom has a scary atmosphere, all dark, with posters of rock bands on the walls. The second one is pink and very feminine. But have you noticed scratch marks on the floor in the bed? The woman who lives here is a werewolf. Detective Marlin's next case is no less tricky. A priceless mirror, six feet tall, with a beautiful silver frame was stolen from a legendary haunted house. The main three suspects are the Halloween monsters last seen in the house. A witch, a vampire, and a werewolf. Can you help the detective figure out the culprit? It was the witch. Silver is known to harm werewolves. The werewolf wouldn't have touched it. Vampires can't see their reflections, so the vampire wouldn't have any need for the mirror. (laughs) The only one who might need this mirror is the witch. Detective Marlin is exhausted. He's been working so hard that he decides to treat himself to a cup of coffee. When he enters the nearest coffee shop, he sees two guys. They wear similar clothes, hold steaming coffee cups, and in general seem to be perfectly fine. But the detective immediately understands that one of them is a werewolf in disguise. Which one? Look at the guy on the right. There are strange marks on the rim of his cup. Are they left by his fangs? Also, his pupils are a bit elongated. And there is a paw print design on the coffee shop paper bag he's holding. Wait, is it a special establishment for werewolves? Detective Marlin suspects that one of his old friends is immortal. One day, he is invited to a small party one of the men hosts. He's standing in the corner, looking at his three friends sitting by the fireplace. And suddenly, it dawns on him. Have you figured out which man is immortal too? The man on the left looks very old-fashioned. The one in the middle is reading a book in Latin. And only the man on the right seems to be very young. But look at that picture on the fireplace. It must have been taken on the day when the Eiffel Tower was open. But the man is there too, and he hasn't aged a day since then. Last night, on a full moon, several people disappeared in the city. Detective Marlin questioned locals and found out that they believe the culprit was a werewolf. Soon, the detective had three suspects, Jack, Levi, and Luke. 
but all of them had alibis. Jack said he had been walking with his girlfriend near the river. Levi had been choosing a silver ring for himself in the mall. And Luke, who worked as a museum guard, had a night shift at work. So, which guy is guilty? Jack was walking under the light of a full moon and didn't turn into a werewolf. Levi wasn't afraid to put on silver rings, even though this metal harms werewolves. It means that the werewolf and potential Uh culprit is most likely Luke. Once, Detective Marlin found out about a strange case. A man who was visiting the city heard about a cursed house. A vampire and a beauty were said to live there. And since the rumor had it that the beauty was held in the house against her will, the traveler decided to help the girl. But when he was talking to her, she suddenly shouted, The vampire is returning! We have to hide in the basement and lock the door! And so they did. But in the morning, the man still found himself turned into a vampire. How is it possible? Yeah. It didn't take the detective long to realize that the beauty herself was the vampire. Detective Marlin's wife was decorating their house for Halloween. She sent her husband a message, asking him to buy something with a leg, an arm, and a head, but without flesh or eyeballs. At first the man was confused, but soon he realized what his wife wanted. Have you figured it out too? Mrs. Marlin needed a skeleton. The next day, the detective got a new message from his wife. This time, he needed to get something wrapped, but not a gift. It had to be something kept neatly in a chamber, which archaeologists considered a great treasure. What did Uh Detective Marlin have to bring home? Mrs. Marlin wanted to use a mummy to decorate the house. A zombie, a mummy, and a ghost bought a house. It has lots of different rooms, but there's one room you will never find there. What is this room? It's the living room. Look at these two ladies. Which one seems suspicious? It's the woman on the right. Her reflection is all wrong. She's not human. Look at these people dancing at a costume party attentively. You need to figure out who is a werewolf. It's that guy in the corner. He's wearing a human mask, but his thick hair is peeking from underneath the mask. Some people believe in me, and others don't. At night, I roam around, and sometimes I float. If you hear a troubled noise coming from the ground, go run and hide from my creepy sound. What am I? I'm a ghost. Some people fear me. The more of me you have, the less you see. What am I? I'm darkness. I'm thought to bring bad luck. 
I blend in the night, and I'm known to mingle with witches. What am I? I'm a black cat. Meow. <laughs> Leslie was driving at night to visit her parents, but unfortunately, her uh -oh. car broke down in the middle of nowhere. She decided to walk around to find some help and came across an eerie-looking house. As she started walking through the garden to reach the door, she suddenly got really scared and ran back to her car. Can you spot the three things that made her terrified? Look at the statue at the center of the fountain. Its eyes are moving left and right. Secondly, do you see the skeleton hands that are trying to crawl out of the ground? Creepy! And on top of everything, the black cat here has a snake tail instead of a regular one. <laughs> Mrs. Blair thought what better way to scare her students than with a pop quiz on Halloween. But she decided to pay extra attention during the exam because everybody would be coming to school dressed in costumes, and that would make it easier for them to cheat. And she was right, because one of them was indeed trying to cheat. Can you tell who? Look, this girl here is hiding a piece of paper with the answers under her witch's hat. <laughs> On Halloween night, Amanda was playing truth or dare with her friends. When it was her turn, they challenged her to enter the old mansion, which not a single soul in town dared to enter before. Uh -oh. She accepted the challenge and went inside. But suddenly, the door behind her closed on its own and uh -oh. got locked. Then a skeleton butler greeted her and said, You're not welcome here, but you can leave if you know my riddle. In the darkest night, I come to life. My eerie gaze causes no strife. What am I that lights the way when monsters and goblins come out to play? Can you help Amanda? The correct answer is a jack-o'-lantern. <laughs> Amy was invited to a Halloween party in her neighborhood. When she arrived at the house, she noticed three uh -oh. people in costumes who were chilling in the hot pool. But one of them was not a real human being. Can you tell who? Well, the first girl in the witch's costume and the second guy with fangs look scary, but they're only wearing makeup. But the girl who is in a mermaid costume is a real mermaid, because look at her neck, she has gills. <laughs> it was Aurora's 21st birthday, and her witch aunts were finally going to accept her to their coven. However, there was one spell that she needed to complete as her final test, and it required a magical cauldron. The catch is one could only use this cauldron if they solved the riddle that was engraved on it, which said, I am a season of colors with leaves that fall. It's when cozy sweaters come out to warm you all. What am I, aspiring magician, do you know? Solve this riddle and your magical powers will grow. Can you help Aurora find the correct answer? The answer you're looking for is the season of autumn. <laughs> Take a look at these two women who are preparing the dinner tables for their Halloween party. But one of them has nefarious intentions. Can you tell who is the dangerous one? <laughs> if
If you take a closer look, you'll see that the lady on the left is more spooky than scary. The green cream on the brownies may look poisonous, but it's just food coloring. And those fingers on the tray are only finger-shaped cookies. So she is simply preparing for the holiday. But the lady on the right didn't even bother to wear a costume, even though she's throwing a Halloween dinner party. And why would anyone sharpen their knives before her guests arrive? That's suspicious. So she must be the dangerous one. (laughs) The young witch, Elaine, who lived in a deep enchanted forest, was invited to her coven's Halloween gathering. Unfortunately, her broom was broken, Uh and the only other way she could get to her destination was through drinking the teleportation potion. However, she had never cast it before, and the three main ingredients for it were hidden with a riddle in her spell book. The first one was, in the shadows I quietly grow. Not a plant, nor an animal you know. After rain, I might start to bloom, often found in a forest gloom. Can you tell what the first ingredient is? It's a mushroom. (laughs) The riddle for the second ingredient went, I'm as light as air, soft to the touch. Upon a bird's back, I don't weigh much. I help a creature soar high and free. Yet I fall to the ground for all to see. What am I? Do you know the answer? It's a feather. (laughs) And the riddle for the third ingredient was this. In darkness I weave my trap so discreet. With patience I wait for a tasty treat. Silent and stealthy in corners I bide. With multiple eyes my world I divide. Can you help Elaine find out what that is? The answer is a spider. (laughs) But now she needed to wander deeper into the woods to find those ingredients. Take a look around. Can you help her spot them? There's the mushroom under these flowers. The bird's feather is here, hidden behind the flowers. And the spider is climbing up this tree. (laughs) One famous club in the city was organizing a Halloween party, and Jenny and her friends were going to go. Inside, there were two different counters from where they could get their drinks. But one of these bartenders is dangerous. Can you tell which one? This bartender is dressed as a vampire for Halloween, and he is simply putting on a fire show. On the other hand, the bartender who is polishing the glasses has a bottle of poison here among the bottles. So the girl should avoid him at all costs. (laughs) James was attending a Halloween dinner party. He wanted to have something to eat, so he headed to the open buffet. Examine these three snack options closely. One of them will hurt his stomach. Can you tell which one that is? The first cupcakes might look like they're dripped in blood, but it's just cherry-flavored glaze. And these worms on the pudding cups are just worm gums. But look at this candy apple. It's glowing like fluorescence. That looks toxic. (laughs) Monsters from all around the world were going to meet at their annual Halloween celebration. But the word was out that a human heard about it and was planning to crash their party. So they placed a monster security at the entrance of the venue. The security was suspicious of these three creatures. Can you help him figure out which one of them is actually a human? Take a peek at the moon. It's not full. 
then how come this werewolf is here? He shouldn't have turned into one, so he must be a human wearing a costume. <laughs> Amy and her friends went to the Halloween parade that was visiting their town. There was a scary maze, and Amy decided to try it herself. However, after a while, she got lost and started to panic. But she didn't notice that there were hints around the maze that would guide her to the exit. Can you spot them? Look at these bricks on the maze walls here. They're in the shape of arrows. So she can just follow them and leave. (laughs) Aaron got dressed as a pirate for Halloween. On his way to his friends, he saw a glowing box on the side of the road. He got curious and went to check it out. He discovered that it was a treasure box. He tried to open it, but it was locked, and there was a riddle on it. I'm colorful and chatty, perched up high, with feathers so vibrant I catch your eye. I can mimic your words both near and far, found in the jungle or as a pet. Can you tell what am I? It's a parrot! Uh Molly, Holly, and Sally are going to the prom in a fancy limousine, but the car breaks down on the way. The party hall is nearby, so the ladies decide to walk. Suddenly, it starts to rain. Luckily, all three ladies have umbrellas, but still, one of them gets wet. Can you guess who? Holly, her skirt is wider than the diameter of her umbrella. Finally, the ladies arrive at the prom. All of their friends look very elegant and fancy. Leah is wearing very expensive designer shoes. Bella carries a Chanel bag. Alice is taking selfies with the latest smartphone. And Kim is showing off a sparkling diamond necklace. But in fact, only one of them is wealthy. Can you guess who? Take a closer look at the logo. Bella's Chanel bag is fake. Leah's shoes are way bigger than her feet so she probably borrowed them from someone else. As for Alice, the smartphone in her hand is not hers. It has Kim's name on it, so Kim is the richest person here. Kim goes to the dance floor. Bobby, Billy, and Kenny invite her to dance, but one of these guys was bitten by a vampire, so he's not safe to dance with. Can you guess who? Bobby has a red mark on his shirt, but it's just lipstick. Billy's drinking something red, but it's just a cherry punch. Meanwhile, Kenny doesn't have any shadow, so he's a vampire. Kim goes to the ladies' room, but all three stalls are occupied. There's a robot inside one of them. Can you guess where? Let's take a look at the first lady's feet. Ouch! She's rubbed multiple corns with her fancy sandals. She can't be a robot. As for the third lady, her pedicure is too messy for a robot. Therefore, the robot is in the second stall. Bella asks Kim to take her picture. Kim takes a couple of shots. Can you find three differences between them? Here they are! Kim goes back to the party and spots a runaway criminal among the guests. Can you see this person too? It's the show host! He's hiding a prison robe under his suit. At the party, Bella gets bitten by a vampire too. Kim takes her to the hospital. They meet two doctors in the lobby. 
one of them is an imposter. Can you guess who? Real doctors wear gloves, and the woman on the right doesn't wear any. Hmm. Bella gets into a hospital ward with three other people. One of them is not sick. Can you guess who? The woman on the left looks perfectly healthy. She has her lipstick on and a glamorous hairstyle. Although her arm is broken, it doesn't mean that she's sick. Kim comes home from a long day. She's very excited to treat herself with a bubble bath. She's been dreaming about it all day. But someone used up all her bubble foam. Kim interrogates her family members. Father says, I spent all day at the garage repairing my old car, and I haven't visited the bathroom yet. Mother says, I was feeling sick all day, so I didn't pay any attention to your beauty products. And Kim's brother says, it wasn't me who took your bubble foam, but I think it was mom. Hmm. Who did it? Take a closer look at dad's beard. There's pieces of foam on it. Busted. The next night, Kim goes to a sleepover with her friends. One of them is a werewolf. Can you guess who? This guy is a werewolf. Take a look at his claws. Oh no. Kim puts some cash in a stash in her room and leaves for Granny's house. In a couple of days, Kim returns and realizes that someone had stolen her money. How did she guess? Kim's stash was in this book. It was on the shelf when she left, and now... The book is gone. Oh God. Kim runs to the living room and yells at her family. Who stole my book? Everyone swears to have nothing to do with the robbery, but Kim spots the thief right away. What about you? It's the brother. He used the book as a stand for his PlayStation. Kim is watching a TV program about risky sports. Oh. Can you help her guess which guy has a better chance of survival? Oh God. The one who's falling into the snow has a higher chance to survive. Hitting the water can be tough, and he still needs to get out of the ocean. Kim's dad wants to buy a boat. His agent arranges a meeting with three people. Each tells a brief story about their boats. Karen says, My husband gave me this boat five years ago as a wedding gift. That's why it has my name. But now I want to sell it because we don't use it. Charles says, I inherited this boat from my father. It works very well, but I don't need it because I'm moving abroad. And Liam says, I built this boat on my own, but now I'm building a bigger one. So I'd like to sell it to get some cash. One of the sellers is lying. Can you spot who? Take a closer look at the first boat. Its name is Karma, not Karen. Therefore, she's a liar. Oh. Kim goes to the nearby hardware store to buy something for her home. Kim asks, how much for the one? The shopkeeper replies, It's two dollars. Then Kim asks, How much for eleven? The shopkeeper replies, It's four dollars. And finally, Kim asks, How much for a hundred? And the shopkeeper replies, Six dollars. What is Kim buying? She's buying a house number. Each digit costs $2. Kim's cat, Fluffy, ran away. She's been looking for him in a forest all evening. Finally, she gets tired and heads home. But suddenly, she sees a witch's house on the way. 
Kim enters and faces the witch. Fluffy is sitting on her lap. The witch says, I'll release your cat if you crack my riddle. I have two besties who are identical twins. Emma was born in 2003 and Gemma in 2004. How is it possible? They're twins, but they were born on New Year's Eve. Emma was born right before midnight and Gemma right after midnight. Duh. The next day, Kim meets a handsome guy who likes puzzles. She asks his name, but instead of answering directly, the guy writes a date on a piece of paper. Huh. Can you help Kim figure out his name? Each number implies a particular letter of the alphabet. The guy's name is Theo. Mm. Theo invites Kim to an art exhibition. Mm. Take a look at these squares. Which one is bigger, yellow or green? Mm. All these black and white squares usually confuse perception. But it becomes obvious that the green square is larger than the yellow one if we put them away. Kim asks Theo, what month were you born? He replies with four emojis. Can you guess the month? Jack-o-lantern stands for J. The next emoji implies U. Nut stands for N. And eggplant stands for E. Theo was born in June. Kim and Theo go for a walk in an abandoned village. They see a sign leading to a famous haunted castle. There are four possible routes, but only one of them will actually lead them to the castle. Can you figure out the correct way? It's way easier to untangle this maze if you start drawing from the final destination. They should take Route B. Finally, Kim and Theo find the castle. They enter the property and see a fancy living room. There are six zombies hiding in the living room. Can you spot them? Hello! The guys run away from the zombies and hide in the basement. They wander around and see three doors. Suddenly, the basement begins to get filled with water. Kim and Theo have to choose a door quickly to escape. But each door has a surprise. There's a tank with a family of sharks behind the first door. There's a deep hole with sharp venomous corals behind the second door. And there's a tank with piranhas behind the third door. Which door is more or less safe? The second door. The basement is full of water, so they can swim over the corals. Megan here is a popular blogger from New York. Hello! Today, she's meeting her bestie, Rosie, in her favorite cafe. Hello! They're both on a diet, so they only order herbal tea and a piece of chocolate cheesecake to share. <laughs> Megan and Rosie have a great time together and post some food pictures. But an hour later, Rosie faints. Doctors reveal that she was poisoned. Let's take a look at Megan's post. Can you figure out where the poison was? Rosie put sugar in her tea, and Megan didn't. So the poison was in the sugar packet. After taking care of Rosie, Megan's finally headed home. The door in her apartment building has a combination lock. And someone has recently changed the four-digit password. Ah. Luckily, Megan finds a hint nearby. Can you help her figure out the new code? Multiply the first and last number. Then multiply the second and the third number. And the code is 2516. Megan goes up to her apartment. Ooh. There's a stunning sunset going on out the window. She takes two pictures for her Instagram. 
Can you find five differences between them? Ready to see the differences? Here they are! Megan decides to eat some snacks and watch the videos of her favorite bloggers. Mm. One of these two ladies is a millionaire, while the other one is broke. Oh. Can you guess who is who? The second lady is broke. Can you see the Eiffel Tower and Big Ben in the background? She can't be in Paris and in London at the same time, can she? So her photo is fake, as well as her fancy lifestyle. Megan gets some cheesy comments from one of her subscribers, what? Evil Eye. But she doesn't take it seriously. She spends a great night with her friends. Late at night, Megan is walking back home alone. Suddenly, Evil Eye appears right in front of her. He grabs Megan and puts her into the trunk of his car. Megan faints. After a while, she wakes up in a basement and sees her fan drawing some sort of a flower on the floor. He says, Two letters are missing here. Guess which ones and I'll set you free. If you don't, you'll stay here forever. Can you help Megan out? The missing letters are M and E. Megan returns home and discovers that someone has stolen her laptop. Well, this just isn't her day, is it? She calls the police, and they interrogate three neighbors. Holly says, I was cleaning my apartment with loud music playing, so I didn't hear anything suspicious. Paul said, I was walking my dog for the last two hours. We just returned home. Everything looked as usual. And Alex said, I spent the whole day at home. I only went out once, about an hour ago, to take out my trash. I noticed a strange guy in a hoodie at your door, but he left very quickly. Who's lying? Alex. He said he had taken out the trash. But take a look at his trash can. It's still full. The next day, Megan gets good news from the police. They caught Evil Eye, and he's in jail now. He insists that the officer should give this note to Megan. But she has no clue what this means. What about you? Ready to see the solution? The note literally says, Jailbreak at 11 a.m. Yay! Megan's favorite blogger has just posted a What I Ate in a Day video. Oh, yes. See if you can spot anything odd here. Wow, she keeps a saw in the fridge. Here's the next video. Can you spot any mistakes? Yep, this rainbow is fake. Today is Megan's 30th birthday. She's been preparing for a party for weeks. She bought a beautiful dress, cooked plenty of food, and decorated the apartment. A lot of friends are invited, including Megan's boyfriend, Jeff. Before the event, he calls Megan, saying, I'm in the office right now, but I promise to be at your place at 8 o'clock. Jeff comes home at 8.05. He brings flowers, a birthday cake, and a diamond necklace. But Megan is really mad. She throws the flowers into his face and bursts into tears. Why? Megan was expecting him to arrive at 8 p.m., but he came at 8 a.m. the next morning. Mm. In the evening, Megan decides to go buy some ice cream. She walks towards her favorite corner store on the block. Mm. Megan meets the owner of this store, Ted, on the street. A uh, mass man has just robbed the store and took all the cash. Oh Megan explores the space and the broken shelves. Then she says, I don't think it was just an ordinary robbery. 
The thief must be your enemy. Oh, really? How did she know? Take a closer look at the floor. The salt packages have been torn. Also, the thief opened the bottles so that the oil would leak out on the floor. Hmm. Why would an ordinary thief waste time opening the bottles? Therefore, they had an intention to cause as much damage as possible. Megan takes Ted out for coffee to cheer him up. The waiter brings them two identical servings. Well, almost identical. Mm. Can you spot three differences between them? Here they are. Megan gets an invitation to a fancy party for bloggers. Yes! Only those who can crack this maze will actually find a way in. Can you help Megan reach the party? She should choose the third route. Megan reaches the final destination. There are three doors, all covered with graffiti. Hmm. Can you help her guess where the party is taking place? Let's take a closer look at the lettering on the doors. If we replace each letter with the previous one in the alphabet, we'll get party, toilet, and exit. Therefore, Megan should enter the first door. <laughs> Security guards at the party got a report. Several criminals are planning to get in. That's why they scan everyone's bags very carefully. They find three suspicious people and arrest them. But one of them is innocent. Can you guess who? The second lady carries too many phones in her bag. A couple of smartphones and one old-fashioned button phone. As for the third guy, why would a bald man need shampoo at a party? Oh, It seems only the first lady isn't a criminal. Megan enters the party and goes to the bathroom to refresh her makeup. There, she meets three pretty ladies. Two of them are vampires. Oh. Can you tell who's not? This lady who's standing next to Megan is a human because she has a reflection. Therefore, the two others are vampires. Megan wants to rent a cozy cabin to spend a weekend in the woods. She's looking through a special app and finds four available options. But only one of them is safe enough. Can you help Megan make the right decision? The second house looks pretty cozy, but there's a creepy clown hiding behind the tree. And the price is suspiciously low. According to the info box, the third house was built nine centuries ago, but it looks pretty modern, so it's probably a scam. The fourth house is chic and high-tech, but the window glass is covered with cracks, which is not safe at all. So Megan should choose the first cabin. Finally, it's the weekend. Megan hits the road to go to the cabin. On the way, she makes a stop to visit the local farmer's market. Mm. Megan picks some lemons. She wants to pay, but her phone is gone. Oh! She interrogates three people standing nearby. (sighs) Kim says, I didn't touch your phone. I was too busy selling my tomatoes. Magnus says, I was taking pictures of my shop for social media. See for yourself if you don't believe me. And Bianca says, I think it was Kim. Her business has not been going well recently. After hearing what they had to say, Megan knows for sure who's the thief. What about you? Check out Magnus's basket with vegetables. He hid Megan's phone among the carrots. Uh-oh. Megan orders a beverage at the local coffee shop and looks around. Hello. One of the customers is not human. Can you figure out who? The waitress. Her eyes are blinking red. 
Hmm, maybe she didn't get a tip. Becky attended her high school reunion last weekend. Hello! All of her friends seem to be doing really well in life. Connor showed up wearing clothes from expensive brands. Hello! Matilda had not just one, but two of the latest smartphones. Oh! Tom showed up in a fancy sports car, and Beth was wearing a luxurious watch on her wrist. Take a good look at Becky's friends. Can you tell who is really rich? Well, let's see. If you look closely, Connor didn't take off the tags from his clothes. This probably means that he's planning on returning them after the reunion. Yeah. Matilda's phones are fake. Look at the label. It's just a copy of the original brand. Ah. And Beth's watch is way bigger than her wrist. Which means that the watch is not really hers. So, Tom is probably the richest person at the reunion. Oh, yeah. Amy's favorite band is in town, and she really wants to go to their concert. She asks her stepmother if she can go, mm. but she says she will only allow Amy to go if she does a series of things for her. Oh. The first thing the stepmother asks is for Amy to bring her some water in a colander. Mm. To get this right, Amy needs to think outside the box. Okay. Can you help Amy figure out how she can do that? Amy needs to freeze some water and put the cubes in the colander. Yeah. Technically, frozen water is still water, right? Next, her stepmother asks Amy to pick out the perfect evening dress for her. Amy walks into her stepmother's closet, and there are three dresses, a red, a green, and a blue. Take a look at the picture. Which dress should Amy choose? If you look closely, the button on the blue dress is about to come off. The green dress has a big paint stain on it, so Amy should pick the red dress. Yes! Before Amy can take the dress to her stepmother, the woman enters the room. She sees the stain on the dress and starts to shout at Amy. How could you do this to my dress? But Amy says she didn't do anything wrong, and that the paint was already there when she walked into the closet. Yes! The stepmother asks Amy to find the culprit. Oh. If she could figure out who had stained her dress, then Amy could go to the concert. Okay. The three main suspects are Amy's stepsisters, Ella, Bella, and Gabriella. What? They don't like Amy, so it's likely that one of them splashed paint on their mother's dress in order to frame her. When the stepsisters are out of the house, Amy sneaks into their bedroom to try to find the culprit. Take a look at the room. The first bed belongs to Ella, the second belongs to Bella, and the third bed belongs to Gabriella. Can you tell who did it? It was Gabriella. Her bed is the third one on the left. And if you look closely, it has a bucket of paint under it. Emily and Barbara are getting ready for a girls' night out. Yes! They are putting on makeup and getting their hair done. They have pretty similar tastes, and their things look pretty much the same. Mm. But one of them has more money than the other. Oh. Looking at the image, can you tell which one has the more expensive stuff? Take a look at Barbara. Her dress kind of gives it away since it's obviously a knockoff. Mm. So Emily is the one with the more expensive stuff. Harry decided to backpack around the world on his own. Yeah. On the plane, he sat next to a girl. He asked her where she was from. Yes. But instead of answering, she showed him two emojis on her cell phone. Oh. Take a look at the image. Can you tell which country the girl is from? Let's see. That's an iron and a piece of land. I guess she's from Ireland. As soon as Harry landed in Paris, he went strolling along the streets to find a place to stay. He found a cute little hotel and decided to go inside. Big mistake. Why? Take a look at the window on the last floor. It looks like there's a ghost. Yikes. I'd look for another place to stay if I were him. <laughs> After he found a better hotel to stay in, he decided to get lunch. He ordered the classic French onion soup. Yeah. But when his dish came, it was filled with cockroaches. He called the restaurant's manager to tell them about the incident. 
The manager said, This is unacceptable. I will find the person who did this and fire them immediately. There were three suspects. The cook said that he had prepared the soup as usual. It was okay when he passed it to the waiter. The waiter said that he hadn't touched the soup. He just served it to Harry and hurried to take the order from another table. The manager also questioned the cleaner, who said that he had spent the last hours cleaning the bathroom and had no idea what the fuss was about. Can you tell who is guilty? No one. Look at the ventilation system. It's full of roaches. They must have crawled out of it and fallen into Harry's soup. Yikes. There are three passengers in the business class of an international flight that is headed towards Rome. Take a look at these three people. Hmm. The first lady looks pretty well dressed. She's wearing a luxurious designer handbag and is texting on her expensive phone. Hello. The guy in the middle is working with stock charts on his laptop. And the third guy is enjoying a cup of coffee while reading an article in the Financial Times. Can you tell which one is the real billionaire? Let's see. The woman may look well-dressed, but if you see the tag on her clothes, it says 100% polyester. It's unlikely that a billionaire would wear something like this. <laughs> the guy working with stock charts is wearing old, ripped shoes. I doubt that's a fashion choice, so he's probably not a billionaire. Oh. That leaves us the last guy. If you look closely, the article he is reading is about him. The title of the article is The World's Newest Billionaire. Oh, yeah. I guess we found our guy, huh? <laughs> Detective Smith was called to investigate a burglary at the city's museum. Oh. A priceless diamond disappeared, and the thief left no trace behind. After analyzing the museum's security cameras, Detective Smith gathered three suspects. The security guard, the museum's curator, and a visitor. The security guard said he only left his post during lunchtime, and he could swear that the diamond still wasn't missing at that time. Hmm. The museum curator spent the day guiding a tour of the museum for a foreign group. Hmm. They came to see the diamond at the beginning of the tour, and it was still shining bright in its place. The visitor said he only popped in for a quick visit, and didn't even pass through the Metzi aisle where the diamond was kept. Hmm. After these three interviews, Detective Smith found the thief. Can you tell who it was? It was the visitor. First of all, he knew the exact location of the diamond inside the museum. Plus, take a look at that string he's fiddling with in his left hand. Detective Smith pulled it from under his sleeve and voila, the diamond was attached to it. I guess he didn't have time to go home and get rid of the diamond, huh? Julie and her friends decided to spend the weekend at a cabin in the woods. They arrived on Friday evening and spent the night playing board games and telling spooky stories. When they woke up on Saturday morning, they found that someone had stolen all their food supply. The door's glass was shattered, but other than that, there were no signs of who could have done it. So the group decided to search the surrounding woods to see if they could find the culprit. Take a good look at the scene the group stumbled upon and see if you can find out who took their food. What's that at the left corner? Those look like bear footprints, huh? And not just one, but rather an entire family of bears. Oh, and they even left an Oreo wrapper on the ground as evidence. Yep, these grizzlies were the culprits for sure. Atlas woke up in the attic of an abandoned house. He tried to find a way out of the house, but all he could find was a room with three doors. Each door hit a different danger. The windows and floor behind the first door were made entirely of magnifying glass, which meant that the sunlight would probably burn him if he entered. The second door hit a room full of poisonous gas, and behind the third door was a hungry lion. What should Atlas do to escape? He should wait until it's nighttime and use the first door. Sydney told her mom that her gymnastics team would go to a sports camp for the weekend. She asked her mom to help her pack a bag for the trip. Her mother packed everything she thought her daughter would need. When Sydney came back from the weekend, she was telling her mother all about the trip. Okay. But somewhere during the conversation, she asked her mother why she hadn't packed a toothbrush. The mother immediately knew Sydney was lying about where she had really been that weekend. Hmm. How?
because Sydney's mother did pack a toothbrush, but she put it under Sydney's gymnastics clothes. If Sydney had really gone camping, she would have used the clothes and found the toothbrush. Kimberly discovered three bags in an old attic along with a note. The note said that there were one million dollars inside one of the bags. It also said that the two other bags were empty. She only had one chance to figure out which bag had the cash, and she could trust that one of the messages written on the bags was true. On the first bag, it said, the cash is not here. On the second bag, it was written, the cash is not here. The last bag read, the cash is in the second bag. If you were Kimberly, which bag would you choose? You should choose the first bag. If only one of the clues is true, then the money is in the first bag. The police have been after Mr. Burke for many years, trying to prove he's involved in illicit activities, but they never managed to catch him. One day, Detective Lawrence decided to make a surprise visit to Mr. Burke's office. As soon as the detective arrived, Mr. Burke's secretary said he was away on a business trip. Hmm. The detective asked to see Mr. Burke's office and took a picture of it, but he wasn't allowed to touch anything without a warrant. So, Detective Lawrence went back to the station and got a warrant. When he returned to Mr. Burke's office, he noticed someone had been in there. Take a look at both pictures and try to find out what Detective Lawrence saw. The desk lamp is tilted and the books are in different places. Someone definitely was in that room. Detective Lawrence decided to search Mr. Burke's entire office. In one room, he found there were footprints up until the middle of the room, and then they disappeared. The only window of the room was open. Oh no, Detective Lawrence shouted. I can't believe he escaped again. He took a picture of the room and took it to the police station. At the station, he showed the picture to the other detectives and one of them said he had cracked the case. Huh. Take a look at the picture. How did the detective solve the case? The detective understood that Mr. Burke was a shapeshifter. This explains why the footprints didn't reach the window. Plus, look at all the bird food on the floor. He probably shapeshifted into a bird and escaped. Srows are flying in the sky, one ahead and two behind one behind and two ahead, one between two and three in a row. Can you figure out the exact number of crows? Three. They're moving one after another. Barista needs to fill two sacks with coffee from another sack of a similar size. Can you figure out how to do it? Easy. Put the empty bags into one another and then fill them with coffee. Two mothers and two daughters enter a coffee shop and order three cappuccinos. Each gets one. How's that possible? They are a grandmother, a daughter, and a granddaughter. Can you write a number that consists of 11 thousands, 11 hundreds, and 11 digits? Many people think it will be 111,111, but in fact, it's 12,111. Rachel's computer gets broken, but she has to do urgent work. So she decides to use her husband's laptop instead. But unfortunately, he has changed the password. Luckily, Rachel finds a note with a clue nearby, SBDIFM. She enters the code, but it doesn't work. Can you help her crack the password? To solve this puzzle, Rachel needs to change each letter with the previous letter in the alphabet. S implies R, B implies A, D should be replaced with C, and so on. And the final password is Rachel. Oh, so yes. cute. Peter, Jenny, and Timothy are trapped in three separate cages. Peter's cell has an explosive in it. Jenny's cage is filled with toxic gas. And Timothy's cell is covered with ice. Can you guess who has more chances to survive?
Timothy. It's just ice, so it's gonna be melting soon. Timothy won't have time to freeze. Yeah. Gerald is 100 years and a few months old, but he only had 25 birthdays in his entire life. How could this be? The man was born on February 29th, so his birthday only takes place once every four years. The police find out that several criminals are going to leave the city by train this morning. Security guards at the railway station detain four suspicious people and examine their baggage. Can you help them figure out who's innocent? This guy carries toothpaste without a toothbrush. Oh. A supposedly blind person carries a flashlight. Oh. And why would a bald man need a bottle of shampoo? Oh. It seems only the guy on the left isn't a criminal. Birds sat one on each tree. One didn't have a place. But when they sat two on each, one tree was left free. Can you figure out the number of birds and trees? Four birds and three trees. A farmer has 350 oranges. Hmm. The challenge is to divide them into three piles so that one pile would be four times smaller than the largest one. And another pile, two times smaller than the largest one. How many apples would be in each pile? Zero. The farmer has 350 oranges, not apples. David invites his friends to spend a weekend at his house. They come along and have tons of fun. Unfortunately, a terrible storm starts the day before they have to leave. It's pouring with rain, and strong winds are breaking trees, tearing down power lines, and causing power outages all over the place. The next morning, the weather gets better. But David discovers that his gold watch is missing. It was a very expensive gift from his grandpa. David asks all his friends just one question. I can't find one thing that's very important to me. Can you tell me what you were doing yesterday? Monica says, I spent most of the day in my room studying. Mike says, I was practicing my electric guitar in the garage. And Mia says, I don't even know what your watch looks like. After hearing their answers, David knows for sure who's lying. Can you figure it out? There was a power outage. It means Mike couldn't play the electric guitar. Also, David said nothing about the important thing being a watch. So how did Mia know it? Therefore, Mike and Mia stole the watch. Can you create a square by moving just one matchstick? You need to think outside the box to crack this puzzle. Here's the solution. This square is tiny but it still matches the task. Rob runs a restaurant. He has four barrels of excellent kombucha. He's saving them for the upcoming anniversary party, which will start in 24 hours. Rob enters the storage room and sees a note near the barrels. Oh. It says, I put a magic spell on one of the barrels. Anyone who drinks kombucha from it will turn into a mermaid in 10 hours. Good luck. Luckily, Rob has one friend, Shelly. Hello who's dreaming to be a mermaid. Yes! Rob decides to test the kombucha on her before the party starts. Can you figure out a way to check four barrels in 24 hours? Rob should give Shelly kombucha from the first barrel right away. Then the second barrel's kombucha one hour later, and the third drink two hours later. If Shelly turns into a mermaid in 10 hours, it means that the first barrel is under the spell. If she changes in 11 hours, it's the second barrel to blame. And if she becomes a mermaid in 12 hours, it's the third barrel. But if Shelly stays the same, the fourth barrel is enchanted. A computer store manager calls the police and yells, Help me! My store has been robbed! The officers arrive at the place immediately, but they can't see anyone. Suddenly, they hear someone banging on the door in the corner of the store. They unlock it and see an anxious lady. It's the manager. Someone locked me in the storage room. It must be one of the shop assistants. Huh? The police officers ask the lady to call her employees for interrogation. The manager says, Just a second, I can't find my phone. Oh, it's over here. 
She didn't even start to call before the officers arrested her. Why? She was locked in the room, and the phone was lying on a counter. How could she call the police? Where does Friday actually come before Thursday? Take your time to think it over. Friday always comes before Thursday in the dictionary. Nina sneaks out of the house late in the evening to meet her secret boyfriend. She thinks that she's very careful and quiet, but all of Nina's roommates know about her plan. Also, they know that Nina will return at midnight. They decide to make a bet. The one who would notice Nina first, when she starts climbing the fence, would be the winner. This person would be free from chores for one month. To avoid falling asleep, Bella switches on her favorite series. Nora goes to the kitchen to make snacks for everyone. Wendy takes a seat in the living room with a book. And finally, Kelly goes to her bedroom and starts meditating. Who's going to be the first to spot Nina when the time comes? Kelly. Her eyes will be used to the darkness and she will see better than the others. Lily is a cool pastry chef. She's been working hard in the kitchen all night to create a special wedding cake. Finally, it's ready. Yeah. Lily puts it in the fridge and goes outdoors to take a break. Fifteen minutes later, she returns and nearly faints. Some monster had ruined her masterpiece. Lily questions three suspects. Diana, the barista, says, I opened the fridge an hour ago to grab a new carton of soy milk. Your cake was fine. Mm. Paul, the bakery's manager, says, I didn't touch the cake. I was talking on the phone with our clients. Mm. And Will, the janitor, says, I entered the kitchen five minutes ago and noticed some chocolate on the floor near the fridge. I opened it and saw the broken cake, but it wasn't me. Who's lying? Diana. An hour ago, the cake wasn't finished yet, so she just couldn't see it in the fridge. Mary parks her car near her favorite store. Can you see anything weird here? Take a look at the reflection in the window. The color of her car doesn't match reality. A small town hosts a winter festival with an ice sculpture competition. The top three sculptures made it to the final. The party goes well and everyone has fun. Oh no, someone has sprinkled the sculptures with salt. They're losing their shape and falling apart. The local sheriff interrogates three suspects. Brian says, I didn't do it, I was too busy building a snowman. Gemma says, I was far from the sculptures taking selfies with my granny near the dining area. See for yourself if you don't believe me. And Dan says, I believe it was Brian. Hmm. The winning sculpture was created by his ex-girlfriend. They don't get along. After hearing what they had to say, the sheriff knows for sure who's guilty. What about you? Take a look at Gemma's selfies with Granny. There's a large salt shaker on the table in the first picture. And in the second selfie, the very same salt shaker is absent. It's hidden in Gemma's jacket pocket. She sneaked the salt and ruined the sculptures. Amy is visiting an unfamiliar city. She sees four magical creatures in this area and freaks out. Can you see them too? Take a look at this tree. It's a wood goblin. There's a transparent lizard crawling up the skyscraper. Also, there's a leprechaun hiding in the flower bushes. And there's a pixie driving this taxi. Diana returns home from work and discovers that someone had broken her antique teapot in the kitchen. What? She gets furious and interrogates three suspects. The housemaid says, I was cleaning the second floor all day long. I didn't even enter the kitchen today. Hmm. The gardener says, I was picking lilies in the garden in the morning. I only entered the kitchen once to put fresh flowers in the vase. The teapot was fine. And the cook says, I was preparing dinner in the kitchen. And then I went to the bathroom to take off my uniform. When I returned back to the kitchen, the teapot was already broken. Who is lying?
The gardener. Take a look at the flowers in the vase. They don't look fresh at all. Bob used to be a farmer in another country. He kept chickens. Things were going well and he made good money. But then he bought a bigger farm in another country and moved there. Soon Bob got to know that floods are very frequent in this area. But he didn't give up and decided to breed ducks instead of chickens. Why? Ducks can swim, so floods aren't so dangerous for them. Here are three matches. Oh, really? Can you make a six out of them without breaking them into pieces? Who said the number has to be standard six? Hmm. The matches make a perfect Roman numeral three, so all you have to do is bring the bottoms of the first two matches towards